welcome everybody. Welcome D and D YouTubers. Yay! We are starting Hi. our first play session of Abomination Vaults. We are going to be uh, with each other for I think four sessions at least. And those who want to continue longer, I'm com completely happy to continue. Um, some folks will be seeing you for the first time now, so I actually need to go around again. Um, <coughs> people should briefly say who they are and what their character is. And then, well, actually, when we start the adventure, your characters will be able to say more. Uh, we'll get to meet each other and need to explain themselves to each other. But just say, uh, I would say about your character, just say, um, you know, class and kind of what they do in a mechanically for now. Okay, so the first person on my screen is Evan. Go ahead. Are you ready? Uh, hello. <laughs> so my name is Evan. You probably know me on the internet as Monkey DM. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, uh, which I sometimes post to. And I'm known probably for the book Steinhardt's Guide to the Eldritch Hunt, which is still coming. Uh, and I'm here today to learn about Pathfinder with a whole lot of other very cool people. And I'm excited to try it out. So I'm going to play a Thaumaturge, which, from what I understood, is sort of a tank uh, which scares people with uh, Eldritch magic, from what I understood, to deal more damage to them uh, in melee. So that's what I'll be playing. I shall not spoil my race just yet because I think it's kind of funny. And uh, I shall pass my turn. Yeah, and my, I... my sense of the Thaumaturge is like you're, you're a monster hunter. Like you... And you have these weird objects that uh, that have effects on them. That, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool, Blaine. All right. My name is Blaine Simple, known on the channel Blaine Simple. That's what I go by online. That's what everyone's here. Hopefully, call me. Yeah. Um, character uh, Kara. She is a pretty wild, a little crazy witch. Uh, Going through a lot of family problems at the moment. Uh, was studying uh, al uh, alchemical explosive potions uh, and various other uh, witch-based brews, uh, bombs, healing potions, curses of the like. Uh, she's bringing a few of them with her at the moment. Hopefully sometime down the road she can make some more dangerous concoctions. Uh but but yeah, ultimately a little a little wild, and she even has a tiny little all-seeing sort of chicken companion that follows her around and uh, uh, calls like a maniac whenever it, someone she doesn't know gets a little bit too close. Uh, all in all, uh, a pretty wild uh, girl, nonetheless. <laughs> okay, so Oz the chicken. Yeah, was it four it supposed from, uh... to be a cat? Oh, okay. Yeah, it was a cat before, but that felt a little bit too prim and proper for someone as uh, <laughs> wild as her. So, yeah, uh, it's a chicken screen. now. This is good. Why doesn't Oz have a beak? I'm f I'm freaked out. <laughs> doesn't need a beak. Oz has eyes, and they see it all. <laughs> hey, he does look scary. <laughs> and she, um, which there are four spell lists in Pathfinder, just like one D and D is gonna have them standardized into three lists and mm. witches can choose from any of the lists and you are an occult witch yeah, occultist yeah curses is... creepy evil eyeballs weird yeah magic like that minds <laughs> ghosts and uh next is rex hello i am uh, a rex or that's how i go by on the internet i my channel mr rex uh is uh, specializes in monster lore doing a lot of uh, discovering old monster content, talking about the things that they don't tell you anymore about monsters, some of those creepy, interesting uh, details that they leave out on the original um, or the new monster manuals, rather. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be playing Dragomir, Shale Scar, a dwarf. Uh, I'm going to be a war priest cleric, so I'm going to be right there in the front lines, uh, hoping to be a little bit of a tank for the group and um, support a lot with uh, blesses and, and, and a lot of heals. Playing a little bit um, weird because ended up tanking Wisdom a lot, which I guess is like the Cleric's main stat, just so that I can go uh, pure melee. So we'll see if this thing works. 
mm -hmm. really excited about this. Um, I'm on a quest to find something very valuable to grant my father as a gift before he passes. So I'm on the search awesome. for uh, cool magical items. Awesome. Yep. And War Priest is one of the two uh, subclasses for Cleric. The other one is the more, uh, call it White Normal. Mage from Final Fantasy. This is the, you know, armored religious warrior Cleric. Okay, next is Kobe. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Kobe. Uh, my YouTube channel, D4 Deep Dives, um, where I do kind of character builds um, for previously D&D. &D. Now it's D&D &D and Pathfinder. And who knows if it'll expand from there. But um, yeah, my character, Roa Yondo, which for those who speak Tolkien's Elven, uh, it means um, like dog cleaver. Uh, it was not the name he was born with, but um, after skirmishing with uh, with with a goblin war party um, and being impressed by uh, by how how nimbly they were able to wield um, their weapons that were maybe a little oversized for you know how little goblins are. He, he got his friend to uh, kind of try and combine elven blacksmithing um, and elegance with uh, goblin ingenuity and, and created kind of a, a, a sort of a, an elven-ish, an elvish uh, dog slicer. Um, his, his friends and, you know, squad mates um, didn't take to to this new weapon and they and they gave him the nickname uh, this nickname dog cleaver which kind of stuck so now he that's that's what he goes by he's kind of embraced it but he also felt a little ostracized and outcast and after a while he got sick of putting up with uh with with his friend's unacceptance of him and um he left to seek his fortune in the wide world um so yeah he is a magus um a a Gish's Gish that I'm super excited to try out, even though I'm a little scared about it because it's not core rulebook stuff and I feel very much out of my element, but I'm um, looking forward to seeing what I can do with them. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be lots of rules questions coming up. I'll be answering all of them. Mm -hmm. Happy to do so. Cool. And Luke. All right. I am Luke. I run the DM Lair. We have a YouTube channel. We publish Game Master resources for 5th edition D&D &D and branching into Pathfinder 2nd edition currently as well. Um, I am playing Brady Titchwillow. I'm a witch seeking power, of course, and some pawns that can precede me in the dungeon so that I stay alive. Yes, she is an elf witch who dumped constitution. <laughs> I wouldn't say jump. I would say that there were higher priorities. Yes, she uh, has the least amount of hit points possible in the game. She also is the her patron is the, well, Rune is her patron. I don't even know if you can call that a patron. The idea of which is that they get their power or they tap power in some strange source that even they might not understand. And so well, she's an arcane now, caster. Georgie is my squirrel, of course. My familiar that I nursed back from health when I found him. I, uh, sightless and small, cold, shivering out in the rain. And uh, Georgie grants me my powers, so I know quite well who my patron is. <laughs> gotcha. I can correct it. Okay, excellent. Let me uh, deal with some foundry crap. Hold on. <laughs> okay, there's Georgie. All right. And her picture... Is that what she looks like now? She looks very healthy. Yes. <laughs> for uh, her age. Who's, who's that? Georgie or Granny? Gran Granny Tish yes, that is what Granny Tishwell mostly looks like. Um, she does have red eyes and like pointy teeth. Mm -hmm. um, her hat hides two red horns that mm -hmm. stick up out of her hair as well, since she is tiefling ancestry. All right. And she's an elf, so she's long lived. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. No, that's right. Uh, now we uh, could start with the town of Otari is where we are. It's a seaside town uh, with uh, where the main industry here is wood cutting. Uh, and 
don't know if you can see it in this picture, but there is a flume, like a little artificial man-made river that transports logs that are uh, harvested deeper inland that floats the logs down to the shore. And it's uh, one of it's one of the last uh, towns that are ports of uh, that are ports before you reach the big capital of Absalom, which is I think a day or two away by by horse. And we start in the Dawnflower Library, which is named after Saren Ray, and also has shrines. Saren Ray is the goddess of redemption, and there are other shrines to some other gods here. And so we're going to go to the town. And Would there be will... any, any dwarven shrines in there? I, well, there are four. Oh, and... I'm going to complain. And people, Austin teases me in our previous group. I, I use the bathroom a lot, so I'm going to have to excuse myself again. Well, I look that up. The Dodd Flyer Library is um, atop a raised shelf, and there's a cliff top right above it that has the Otari Cemetery. And there are shrines to Caden Kalian. He is the god of freedom and heroism. He's the human that went on a bender and woke up a god. Aristotle, who was the god of uh, hearth. Hearth, home, hunting, farming, and Gazray, the god of nature. So no dwarven god per se. However, it, it's very much against Saren Ray to turn anybody away unless you're like following a Rovagug and seek the destruction of all things. And who was the one, uh, the god of the hearth? Aristal or Arastal. Not quite sure how it's pronounced actually. And here in this library, there's a wide range of books, ranging from fiction to history, satire to textbook, and even a sizable collection of mostly tasteful erotica. And it's <laughs> led by uh, this uh, very chirpy halfling woman named Vandy Banderdash, a devotee of Saren Ray. And she always greets newcomers and kind of always has an idea of what they're looking for. She has kind of an encyclopedic knowledge of their library, and she's very fastidious. Like, everything must be where it belongs. And she's had this... Um, uh, uh, you tell me, Monkey DM, do you have an idea of how they met? Maybe he was curious and wandered in yeah, one day uh, and took probably something off himself and put it in the wrong place? I don't know. Uh, that sounds about right. Yeah, like put it in the wrong place, as in his bag, and try to walk away. And uh, and <laughs> was told that he could not just walk away with the book. And I understand and, uh, you're a, uh, you're a collector. She explains uh, to the other her her uh, other people, but um, you know you can't do that. She insists frequently that you put it on the shelf, and even if you have no ill intentions, she always you know looks at you in the corner of her eye. And uh, when I come back from the restroom, <laughs> Luke and Kobe can, uh, you know, meet. And I could, you know, always edit things. I plan to put this full session online, but I think this for, because this will be kind of like the one everyone sees, I am going to do some edits, by the way. So feel free to, you know, discuss what you want while I'm gone for a minute. Okay. Vandy yeah, Banderdash, she she greets the two. She greets you. Ooh, I'm still remembering everyone's name. Granny, <laughs> hello, Granny. Well, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. She just sees you as um, a uh, another person who's. Uh, oh, there's just a, a someone who has frequented this library a lot and has in, had interest in occult subjects. And she had been asking you earlier, she had an intense interest in what was what you're researching, but it sounds like you weren't fully saying. Is that right? Yeah, I, I, well, she probably knows that I'm looking for information on the ruins in the area, especially more about the one below that lighthouse as well. Okay. 
All right. She says, ah, I found a book on the Rose Guard for you, Granny, the, that might interest you about their biographies mm -hmm. and their descendants in town. As you know, one of their descendants is the mayor of this town. And, you know, if once again, you can always <clears throat> ask me if you have any other research questions. And she, you know, she says that with a particular eagerness and hopes that you will someday open up to her, more to her. And she says, who is this with you? You have, a, you have an assistant, I see. Yes, Georgie is my little buddy. He went to university, you know. Oh, what a cute uh, little thing. And I think she yes. might have been talking about me. Why would she talk about you? Because she seems to be under the false impression that I'm your assistant. Well, uh, how would you describe our relationship? It's more of a partnership, oh, really. I sure didn't mean to make assumptions, she says. She looks, you know, embarrassed. Yes, my partner and I here, and Georgie are here. A mutual <laughs> beneficial arrangement. There are no assistants. Welcome, welcome, she says. She, she points to the door. <laughs> the door out? To the, the door in. <laughs> Okay. She's welcome you yes. inside. She just you know, hopes to... uh, Roa will actually go open the door and like hold it open for Granny and make a great show of like bowing and and um, you know. Oh, thank you, Georgie. Please give him a nut. <laughs> Georgie looks at me. Looks at you. <laughs> and oh, actually, I'll, I'll I'll look down and be like Georgie. The nut. Um, Do what your mistress well, tells you. Be a good familiar. Uh, well, it doesn't exactly work that way. If Georgie doesn't want to give you a nut, then no nut shall you receive. Not much of a mistress, then, are you? Uh, Rin hmm. uh has a note here for you. She said it was most urgent. She gave it to me. Um, uh, the middle, she, the, early this morning, said you weren't answering your door. And uh, hands, hands to you a folded note in an envelope. Oh, wonderful. Yes. I will. I will give it to Georgie. He nibbles it open. And then I will pass the note to my non-assistant. Yeah. Would you do the honors of reading this? <sighs> Very well. Well, the note I'll reads that, uh, where are you? <laughs> this, uh, I, uh, there is um, uh, I need to uh, the adventure the other uh, individuals have arrived and we should meet at uh, at 2pm today and I hope you're not out of town best Rin oh wonderful it looks like she's found some more assist <clears throat> adventuring companions for us. <laughs> that would be nice to share the burden, I suppose. What What is uh, Monkey normally doing? And I don't know if Monkey has any reaction to the squirrel. That's uh, I was I was I was texting you on Discord. Um, I oh, I can't read Discord. Message. I have too many. Uh, oh going. well, then that's fine. Yeah. Uh, no, I was wondering when I heard not. Basically, I would have like tried to stealth around. Like, hmm. <laughs> there's there's food around here. <laughs> just nuts. so, yeah. When uh, they talked about food, I would have just like reared my uh, my my little head from the back and just. Uh, um, hello, I uh, I heard there is food around here. Oh, I, by uh, the way, George, have... Georgie has. Does Georgie have the scent ability? No, never mind. What did you just say? I'm sorry. Uh, hello, I uh, I heard there's food around here, uh, so uh, don't mind if I do, as I will uh, forcefully walk towards the squirrel and attempt to grab the nut from him. You see, uh, apparently the squirrel has a stash of nuts, but he doesn't give them up lightly. Georgie is going to leap away from this simian creature, cling to the wall and climb up to a high spot in this library, chittering wildly, and then he starts stomping his back leg. <laughs> Hey, Luke. Like, in a territorial oh, no. response. 
Luke. Nice, I can do that too, as I will uh, start climbing the wall as well as a simian ape and just put my perch myself next to the <laughs> squirrel on the library. May I know where we are tapping our leg? He's gonna, he's going to turn his back to you and start stomping his feet with his back turned to you. His, his, the cadence of his ritualistic territorial stomping and chittering is raising. Granny calls to you. I would be careful if I were you. You don't want to unleash the fury. Um. Vandy Banderdash looks over and says, um, um, sorry, Williamson. Are you, does she call you Williamson? Yeah. Um, she she uh, looks yes. about and she likes sees the two animals in the corners of the of the ceiling and she says, "What what's going on here? What Williamson?" Um, I, I thought I was playing a game with the squirrel, uh, in the game of food, survival of the fittest. I, I I do believe you're trying to steal his nuts. <laughs> some some would call it stealing. <laughs> that is correct. Yes, um, I would not refer it as such. Williamson, I believe you were filing some books away. Well, the thought of food uh, was a lot more enticing than uh, putting books in a shelf in an order that I know you will correct me on later because I would not have done it properly. All right, all right. So she and she turns to Granny and say, "Don't, don't, don't mind the help." She says, "Just continue on your research, please." And uh, but I, I did, I did hear, I did hear that she was looking for assistance. May I inquire what you require assistance with? Perhaps my 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 talents might be of use. Well, that Madame. depends entirely upon what you're good at, besides trying to steal nuts from a small squirrel. <laughs> well, uh, believe it or not, I um, I haven't stolen any nuts yet. First of all. Uh, and second of all, uh, I, uh, I see that you are a frail old lady, if I, if I can say so. In a, um, No, you shall not. Very well. You are a um, sturdy young lady, uh, and um, I, I am a sturdy young man. As such, I feel like I could offer my protection, although your uh, um, camarade seems quite strong as well. What would you say you do around here? Um, I primarily collect uh, various um, trinkets for research, um, notably in the occult, as uh, I will lift an eyebrow. (laughs) (laughs) I'd like to say that something we're trying to kill you. Sorry, hold on. Keep going. I gotta, I gotta turn the volume down. Yeah, I'm sorry. Everybody, this is probably a thing for everybody. In the upper right corner, you see the sound volume button. It looks like a speaker, loudspeaker. Click that. And go under um, global volume controls. And then adjust the playlist volume. Okay. There you go. Yeah. All right. Now that we're all back. The occult. Do you do you have any combat expertise? Like, if if things were trying to kill you or me, you know. I, um, as a matter of fact, I do. As I, uh, I will use my tail to just unsheath uh, part of my blade, not fully, as this is a library. But... Wonderful. I turn to Roa. What would you say? Does he look like he's up for it? Mm. Uh, do you mind? As and I'll like point at the at his sword. Um, that's, that's that's an interesting blade that you've got. There. I'd love to get a closer look. Um, yes, of course, sir. As I will um, slowly climb down uh, the bookshelf that I'm still perched on. Uh, and as I walk and stand up, you see that I'm probably shorter than both of you. Uh, 
and even like the the way I walk is fairly hunched. It's yeah. not very like a bit using the paws to move forward. And I'll uh, use my tail, pull out the blade completely, and pass it on to you. Thank you. Um, d describe it for me. Right. Uh, it is a rapier, which you see it looks incredibly elegant, uh, very finely, almost of noble quality, you'd say, uh, which has nothing to do with the attire of the person wielding the blade, uh, who looks a lot more disheveled. Uh, I'm assuming just from your expertise with blades in general as a your know your way in fighting uh, that's probably not his blade or it was a very expensive gift uh, okay. or you know something gifted yeah Get I'd say um, well his sword is certainly well crafted though whether or not he is uh, proficient in its use I can't determine but based on both the craftsmanship and also um, how well used it seems to be. Um, whoever has made use of this knows his way around uh, fighting. And he'll hand it back. Okay. Right. Grab the... Are there little traces suppose... of blood on the rape here? <laughs> yeah, it's probably like. Like, the, the, although the craftsmanship is very fine, like, probably the upkeeping of the blade has not been done to the its at most extent and and Williamson would have being a thaumaturge have a whole collection of random items I don't know if that's yeah. on him now or something he would have uh, you do hear him. like a bit of a like as I pass the blade like maybe a bit of a clinking sound as like under the hood is a lot of where like everything is as like as I kind of like step down on the ground you just hear like clink 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 mm -hmm. as uh, everything is kind of moving around in there He'll just, um, Roa will, will look at Granny and say, worst case scenario, one more pawn for your collection, I suppose. Yes, his, his value will prove itself out shortly enough, I suppose. I will be very honest with you. I am just getting stuffed in this library and uh, some fresh air would do me very good. So at this point, I'll accept just about anything. Wonderful. You're hired. <laughs> Um, Dangerous, risky business. The pay is zero, and I'm sure you'll do just fine. <laughs> <laughs> hired? That's... You hear Vandy Vanderdash. It sounds like she was listening this whole time. She says, hired? But but you have to file away some books. And you also have to sweep the floor. I was going to promise you, I was gonna promise you a, a, uh, a mug of uh, a beer mug and a candle. As, as just out of curiosity, when I look at uh, Granny Tichwillow and at uh, Roa, like what do their attire is? What what do they look like exactly? Like what's the attire like? Um, so Roa is decked in like fighting leathers. They're like a midnight blue, um, kind of strapped closely uh, to himself. He's got um, like a few shuriken. Um, call it on like a belt or a bandolier um, with uh, a sword blade kind of sticking out, the, at least the hilt of the blade sticking out uh, from his back where he's got it strapped. Um, yeah, he, I would say he carries himself like um, with, with uh, a certain amount of both confidence and uh, sort of ease. Um, he's comfortable in his body. I'll say it that way. Mm -hmm. All right. Granny has pale skin, dark hair that rolls down probably to mid chest or so, red eyes, and pointed teeth. She wears dark robes, and she has a pointed, wide brimmed hat. And then there is a fancy dark choker that goes around her throat. All right. So seeing the choker around the throat. Um, not to be rude, but I think they will have better trinkets for me than the ones you've been offering me so far. You've been very kind. I, I really appreciated the glass she of water this, uh, the other day. Frozen look, and she also kind of um, she's always been very stern with you, and also you know lectured you. Sometimes hurt your feelings, but for the first time, you see a softness in her. Like she's really been attached to you. But she's uh, kind of uh, doesn't want you to go. Mm. I, I don't read that. I'm not very good at reading people. 
<laughs> is it nuts? Is it nuts you want, she says? <laughs> and, and Broa will lean over and just say, Psst, just say, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> um, I had a new shipment you, of walnuts straight from Absalom, she says. She's walking back into, into the you, you have to understand quarters. It. She's walked away. You, she's trying to get those nuts. Uh, actually, as let she's me, leaving. Let me, sorry, let me retcon that really quick. I actually want to cast the message cantrip to say that instead of whisper it to you so that she can't overhear it. So okay. that's how you just hear my she's voice. still getting those nuts, though. She's convinced yeah. this is what it is. As she's walking away, I'll just like say as she's leaving like with a louder voice. No, no, you don't understand. It's not me. It's you. <laughs> Here's the nuts. Here they are. And you hear her. You know, she has heels and you hear her heels coming back. She's coming back. I don't know if you guys are continuing to research. What are you guys doing? So wait, if she literally has a bunch of walnuts, like a basket of walnuts or something, Georgie is going to scurry across the wall, launch himself <laughs> at her. He is going nuts just trying to get at these walnuts. <laughs> no pun intended. There's a flying squirrel um, in the bestiary. I just saw yesterday in the Pathfinder bestiary. I just have this image. And she like walks in and her bag of nuts now has Georgie attached to it. Georgie's legs are all and and um and she's you know alarmed by this and she drops it and you know nut walnuts are now rolling on the floor. Oh baby, Georgie is scooping them up. He's got two stuffed into his pouches and his cheeks. And then he's got a handful. He comes running back to me, and then he goes into his little side pouch on like probably I have like a little thing on my robes. He goes and ducks in there and starts going, putting his nuts away, and then he comes running out and he's gonna just keep taking trips back and forth, grabbing nuts and then stashing them away. While that's happening, she's looking at Williamson the whole time and says, See so many nuts. I understand, but I'm really curious about what they have to show me. I'll see you around. And I just walk out. <gasps> no, <laughs> she, you know, <laughs> she, you know, she's scooping up the nuts and, you know, I, I will, she, I will have like, and use she's, my, you know, she's yeah, turning around. I will around definitely use my tail to like sneak a couple, mm, just like steal a couple okay. of nuts because might as well. But yeah, she's not able to I'm catch up with you. I'm going to walk over to her and say, now, now, my dear, don't worry. This uh, fellow may not prove as useful as uh, he implies. So if he doesn't... He, he's very just... careless and, and uh, very irresponsible and forgets his duties. And he runs off for, for random oh. reasons. Yes. So, so if he proves to be thus with us, then I assure you we, we shall deliver him back to you. Now, I cannot guarantee that he'll be unharmed because with his dangerous places we're going into, but I'm sure there's a town healer and resurrection person that could help you out if needed. Yes, yes, and uh, she says, uh, in fact, um, you you know, she administers the magical, well, she and the druids in town. Um, She says, I I, I won't um, charge you for healing. Um, Just come here and, you know, I'll, I'll make sure that 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 you're all right and there is more nuts where these came from if 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 your if your partner wants some she says oh, wonderful you know now let me ask like you a question. fixing up her hair which got messed up during that exchange can you can you bring people back from the dead no that's far beyond my capabilities oh, and dear what are you doing? Uh, where are you? Are you? Are you going to that gauntlet? I knew it. You are. You're. Oh. You're... Now you're getting all worked up over nothing. It's purely a hypothetical question. We just want to, uh, <clears throat> you know, cover all of our bases, so to speak. We are nearing the five hundredth anniversary, and you know what the nursery rhyme says. I don't. Belcora. The evil sorceress witch. The evil witch is going to come back and eat children and and, oh. and eat little things, th- things that are small, like your squirrel. Oh, really? 
Well, it's I, I, I dangerous. And, and you can f- find more artifacts and nuts in less dangerous places. <laughs> Does this witch live underneath the lighthouse? Do you look interested in... Probably. <laughs> want to find the witch? Oh, no! The, the, the legends say that the witch leaves the lighthouse and floats around and haunts the nearby swamps. So we can find her She's in the lying. swamps. She's lying. So I, the answer I, I to your that. question was yes. It's, She's oh, okay. the legend says she's oh, in the lighthouse. Wonderful. We shall not go to the lighthouse and instead go to these swamps. She uh, stands back and says, "Yes, I, I, I'm sure you, you, you will. And once something happens, um, I." I know people in Absalom. If you need someone raised from the dead uh, or anything. You know, it did occur to me. If if this witch is so dangerous, perhaps we should not send a Williamson in dangerous way. We'll just send Williamson to the lighthouse instead while the rest of us go to the swamp. No, you you never should separate. You you know that it's in it's in this you know it's in the book I gave you. Don't split the party. Really? You never want oh. to do that. You, no, you need to stay together in the swamp, because there's mysterious uh, will o' wisps all around. Will o' wisps that are rumored to have lots of treasure. In the swamp, your cat is posing. Um, <laughs> in the swamp, <laughs> yes. Well, well, absolutely. I have what. books. I have books about swamps, and she go, goes back into the uh, library. Uh, don't bother. Don't don't bother yourself, good lady. Fear not. We'll take care of your monkey. Okay. We'll return him to you, safe and sound. Okay. Now, where's that broom? She says she's. Where did he put that broom? And he, she starts wandering around the library. All right. And uh, in, in my brilliant organization skills, like instead of organizing the books properly, like in one of the bookshelves, there's just a broom sticking out where a book should be. <laughs> you hear her, you know, kind of yelling in the distance, in the far distance as you're, um, well, it is close to two o'clock. You'd be a little early, but you can head over to Rinsevixi now. Yeah, I, I think we should go over there. We also need to... We, there's only three of us. We're a little light. I tell my companions that we need to get some more recruits, some more fresh meat on body. People that can help us as we go adventuring. Yeah. So Agreed. That's not so easily found. Perhaps in the taverns in the evening. Well, why don't we um, why don't we answer the summons and go mm. from there? Yep. Okay. Well, her curio curio shop, and I'm going to move you guys over. Hold on. Let me put our other two. We got, we got, is it Kara or Kara? Kara? Kara, yeah. Okay, Rinsa thinks he's curio shop has no signs and it's completely there are no it's not a traditional building it's an open air camp with her tent in the middle and things that she's offering for sale uh with little uh uh, descriptions next to them are in the field around her her in a 60 foot diameter circle in a ring of standing stones and in the middle is a triangular piece of canvas that she lives in and this lets her observe this the night sky and with her well this is what she looks like she is a a, an elf tiefling and something i assume you and granny would have shared right like you would have she knows you're an elf tiefling as well uh, she could probably tell. Yeah. yeah. Even though I try to hide my horns, it's not, it's hard to hide everything. All right. And there's a chicken walking around. <laughs> and there's also a, a dwarf. 
and and Kara, uh, who is a human, uh, who are sitting there, and Rinsa Finksy says, "Ah, you are you are early. Where were where were you last night, Granny?" Oh, I was I was having my hair washed. Ah, she says, "Yes," um, you, and you're covering it with your hood. I mean, my hair is still like dangles down, and you can see it, but the top of my head is covered with my hat. Yeah, uh, you know her well enough, so that she knows you. You know that she knows you well enough, and you know that she knows that you're not telling the truth. <laughs> and she says, "Ah, well," but she's not going to bring it up right now. Uh, and she says, "Well, here are the other uh, adventurers I sent for." Why don't you introduce yourselves? Uh, Dora, Dora Gomir, uh, I is a kind of lean over to her and just go, "Oi, run!" Is that the witch they've been talking about on the nursery rhymes? Look at those teeth; they're sharp. You're leaning oh. over to K- to Rin. Oh, uh, no, no, no! I need to go over the history again with you one more time. <clears throat> she clears her throat. Her eyes are red. No, no, no. Uh, uh, D- Belcora is long dead, long dead. And she says that Dora Gamir here is a uh, accomplished warrior uh, and acolyte of Trud, or Trud, probably, is how it's pronounced. And, That's in your accent. That's good. And I'm sorry, you just told me this. Kara? Kara. Kara, okay. That's why. Okay, Kara is a uh, someone who also uh, pr- practices similar witch arts as well. Um, Oz the chicken has sort of just been uh, motioning its head down to the ground as if it was pecking with its non-existent beak, just trying to 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 to, to play the role of a chicken. Uh, it, it didn't bother with anyone at the moment uh but the second that you get in range around uh 30 feet close to it it quickly turns its head just cracks it over and then through its uh partially glowing eyes a powerful resonation of uh of a chicken and then it just starts hopping around uh and then quickly scurries back uh behind uh the legs of kara a slightly hunched over witch uh, with crazy messy hair and dirt sort of over her uh, her traveling clothes and on her skin. She sort of just turns and uh, gives like a wide-eyed, curious stare at those two as uh, the conversation begins, sort of looking at you like a, like a feral wild animal. Like, <laughs> hands raised a little, curious. And Ooh, uh, I, like, I, I, I wait for you guys coming over too, and I just go... Have no fear. I've been told that the chickens like these are normal in human lands. It's safe. Roa will kind of lean in to, or actually message um, uh, Granny and just be like, "Mm, these two give me a little more confidence than the Venara, to be honest. Yes, I agree. Especially the dwarf. I just love the way he talks. I wonder if he would lend me his tongue. Oh. Vince of uh says, I, I see there is uh, uh, that Williamson from the library is here. Hello, hello. She's kind of looking at you, Granny, saying kind of, I didn't expect him to come along. Yes, he, he is our most recent recruit. He has proven himself quite valuable at nothing quite yet, but we're <laughs> sure that he will either do so or be left behind dead. I mean, um, be dismissed from our services. Yes, yes, Granny. I, I see you are um, gathering uh, more help, and these two are ready to assist you. She, you know, looking at you, only you, only she knows only you can see her expression. Assist you um, mm-hmm. in your quest. Uh, though I do have a new, re- uh, I will need to tell you more today. I inform you of some. Uh, something I've seen. It... Oh, I understand. Is this um, a secretive in nature? Do I need to dismiss the assistance? 
I think it is best if all of you are present. Very well, then. Um, yeah. uh, perhaps introductions are in order. My name is Roy Yondo. Um, I'm an elf from... Uh, from um, gosh, I can't remember my own backstory. What were the name of those <laughs> mountains that I said I was from? It sounded like um, Fog Peaks. Yes, the Fog Peaks. Uh, from from Fog Peaks. Um, and this is... Uh, and, I'll, and I'll just turn to Granny and be like, not presuming to introduce you for you. Yes. I'm Granny Titchwillow, and this is Georgie. And the squirrel's on my shoulder <laughs> eating a nut. Mm-hmm. Now, and I'll gesture to our simian companion. Please state your name and occupation for the record. Uh, hello, my name is William Son, son of William. Uh, I, I was working at the library earlier, and now I am working with uh, Madame uh, Granny Tichwillow. Uh, I'm going to walk offered... over. Mm-hmm. Okay. She offered uh, me to work for her in exchange of, uh, of uh, magical trinkets and no payment. Uh, so I'm really hoping I get the magical trinket. I'm going to walk over quickly to um, Williamson and just say, in the future, don't mention working at the library. It's considered an inferior occupation. Ah, that is good to know. I was told by the librarian that it was the most prestigious thing to do, to vacuum the floors and to, to dust the books. Those who occupy an occupation will always say that it is the most noble pursuit, and they're almost always wrong. And Ritz of Fixie okay. says, this is a, uh, uh, these two are a team. You offer yourselves as a team. Um, to the uh, to Granny, and and you feel free to introduce yourselves. I say, <clears throat> well, I've I've been told that human females go first. So, uh, Kara, you can you may start. She uh, trips over herself a little bit as she takes a step forward. Oh, hello there. My name is Kara. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Uh why exactly are they here to help us, per se? Thought we could do this on our own. Think they'll pilfer some of the goods while we're not looking? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they're going to need any alchemical reagents, right? What you're looking for is quite rare. And, and, and occult-like. Oh, I see. Well, then I, I need no gold. It sounds like you'll get along swimmingly, says Rinse of Inksy. You are looking for... Any guys. We won't be stealing from each other. We wouldn't want that, would we, Granny? Oh, no. That that would just be absolutely horrible. It would break down party composition, lead to infighting, and dead bodies left behind. Nobody wants that. No, 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 no dead bodies here, no. Uh, my name is Doragomir Shelskar from the Shelskar clan from Druma, the five mountains. You might have heard of them. They're pretty far. Can we just call you Dora? Dora is perfectly fine. That's do, basically my second you, name. Uh, Dora, do you do you do a lot of exploring? <laughs> I, I w- I've walked around the human lands for the past... Uh, 10 to 15 years learning about everything that I can learn, seeking artifacts and relics and no gold at all. As uh, as she says, Dora, do you do some exploring? Uh, you'll see the monkey uh, walk behind Dora and put on a <laughs> tiny red red hat <laughs> that he just so happens to have in his pocket. <laughs> I, I, um, I, I, sorry, I can't I can't take it any further. I was going to make a comment about your boots, but I, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Um, Rinza thinks he says uh, to Williamson, now, does Vanti know you're here? Vanti Banderdash know you're here? Uh, yes, she was very happy to let me go. Oh, oh, she looks surprised. Okay, so I, I need to tell you what I've uh, seen. I thought it was just an aberration, but the last couple of days now, the conflict, the lighthouse seems to have been glowing the top of the lighthouse. Now, and I'm told that it's very rare for these lights to light up in lighthouses. This is bad. Yes, it means someone's in there. 
Well, this is not a lighthouse that has been uh, used really for navigation. For, For some strange reason, it was a lighthouse inland, far away from, relatively far, about 15, 30 minute walk from here, uh, away from the shore. So it, it, that is strange in and of itself, but it is a, it is in, it is the, the goth light is a focus of the town legends. In fact, there's a nursery rhyme that the children say, and it goes like this. When the fog is creeping and the moon is low, when the town is sleeping, gauntlet glows. That's when she arises for her midnight lunch. Naughty kids are prizes for her teeth to crunch. But if you obey me and obey the rules, you're safe from Belcora. She only eats fools. She, The Rose Guard who founded this town were an adventuring party that con- confronted Belcora in the gauntlet about 500 years ago and one of their number died and actually this town is named after him and they have sent they established this town decided to, the adventuring was no longer for them after the tragic loss of the person who was the center of their group and that light has not been lit ever since and only I, fortunately, am able to see this light. Hopefully, it does not glow brighter. And the town is uh, the town guard are already on edge from recent events. And I figured it made sense since I know you, Granny, have been wanting to go into those ruins uh, for me to send for some other adventurers. Now that it's become urgent to investigate and see what's going on in that lighthouse. You say you're the only one that sees it glow. Yes, yes. I. It's at the very edge of my sight, uh, and I have pronounced a uh, vision in the moonlight. Hmm. She, her eyes don't have pupils, and she, she seems to speak the truth. She's something mystical and strange about her. She. There's always an air of. Uh, some things move on their own around her, like almost as just an unseen spirit. She seems to have some something about her has given her some strange ability. And you you suspect that we might find this sorceress there, what reincarnated? Well, I wouldn't imagine that would be the worst case scenario. Uh, again, it's a product of nursery rhymes, but. As the stars would tell, things usually happen in, uh, at times of anniversaries. Uh, and so I, I wanted to make sure to gather this group, uh, some people who were had some experience dealing with unknown dangers, to just see what the, what's at the light for now. You might have to send... What, what anniversary is it again? We get, uh, the anniversary when she died. Yeah. How many years has it been? It's been... Let me, I 500, 500, I believe. 500? Yes. Yeah, it's a couple of centuries ago. Not a big deal. Mm, I'm sure it'll be fine. a few times over, actually. Perhaps it is a bigger deal than we presume. How old? Yes. M- it's, Mr. Uh, Bluff, how old are you? Me? I'm sorry, you're speaking to me? Sorry, it's yes. the 500 year anniversary I, uh, is seven years from now. Sorry, go ahead. Uh-huh. I'm 232 years old. Mm. The youngest of my family. But it could be something benign. There are often uh, troublemakers that lair in there. Uh, but sending out a light saying we are here does not make sense unless they want people to exp- who knows my yes but you said that not everybody can see it only you can because you have some sort of a gift with your vision but correct that's true that is true well then not everybody can see it perhaps it is something they cannot control a light that involuntarily lights up when something horrible is about to happen yes yes and as you know i'm not able to enter any i must stay outdoors she says to granny and 
I, I hope that you can find out what what I can. Absolutely, I I believe that my companions and I will be overjoyed to delve within the depths of this ruin and find everything that may be of value or interest to us, you, and our little monkey friend here who appears to want to steal everything he can get his little paws on. It, it oh, yes, not... but above all, we go ahead and uh, begin traveling with each other. I do understand that there are some deadly things in this world that can cause the deaths of us all if we're not careful. So before we go ahead trusting each other and not to do things of that caliber, could I know a few things about what you all specialize in so I know where to stand? <clears throat> um, Absolutely. Yeah. So Roa will actually he'll he'll pull his um, his his sword out at that uh, invitation and um, go into just a very brief sort of like kata like um, call it a, 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 a training warm up exercise. But you notice that as he's sort of swinging the blade because of the holes that are drilled inside of it, it makes sort of a uh, a song almost as he's um, as he's practicing um, a sort of a haunting melody and um, he'll put the sheath he'll put the sword back in his sheath and say um, that's pretty much what I do uh, only infused with a bit of uh, arcana uh, uh, seeing him pull out his blade. Going, I'll be right back, but you guys can go. Seeing him pull out his blade, I'll just uh, do the same and pull out mine, and you'll see that at the same time, one of my hands is bandaged, and uh, one of the bandage kind of comes, lo comes loose a little bit, uh, revealing like an amulet below. Uh, as I'll... Uh, swing my blade as well uh, and you see like power from the amulet surging helping the blows uh, although it looks way more animalistic and way less refined than whatever was just presented to you before I'll, I, I'll raise a brow appreciatively but keep my thoughts to myself and this funny little trinket that I found You'll see if we fight alongside each other, if you are about to be hit, I can deflect that. Sometimes. Sometimes I miss. Sometimes you'll get hit. Oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> Suppose I'll be the one having to avoid striking you in the back line then. Ah, I don't know. Would you like to go ahead and show our new companions what you're capable of? Ah, well, um, <clears throat> I have this water hammer right here and I kind of show it and it's it has these burn marks all over it, like it's been used as a blacksmithing tool, but also a fighting weapon. And really most of my gear kind of looks like that. Parts of it just kind of burned. I still have like a smithing apron, like on top of my breastplate. Um, there are a lot of like accoutrements kind of built atop, atop the breastplate, um, holding different pieces together. Like there's a lot of like, it's like a weird combination of having a lot of experience crafting, but not being very good at it. There's just a lot of it going on, basically. And um, <clears throat> I kind of show my shield um, and, and my Warhammer. I just go, I, 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 I'm just very strong. I, I don't really know. I can't. I don't really do like a thing. But I can show you my muscles and I, I can cast spells. But only a few times a day. So I can't like do it to show you. Do you have be a waste. Um do, do, does Duragomir have any sort of like holy symbol or anything like that that he's wearing that would kind of indicate um, his kind of cleric nature? Yeah, you would see it on my on my shield uh, at level two. I can make my shield uh, like a holy emblem, but for mm -hmm. now it's just inscribed with the okay. symbol. Um, so Trud, I don't I don't know what because it, it, it's one of the the gods that doesn't have like a full description. Um, so I don't know what it's supposed to look like, um, but it would be one of the minor dwarven gods. It would um, like showcase so, in the shield. Uh, seeing he's that, the youngest um, son of Torag, and the strongest. Okay. 
deity yeah, in the see, dwarven pantheon. Huh. Yeah, seeing that Roa would would just kind of say, um, a dwarf of faith, it would appear. Hmm. None other. Well, Rosa, I'm sorry. I interrupted you. My voice carries. I should let you continue. No, I, I just I'm appreciative. It's always handy to have in a fight. Glad to have you along. Hi, glad to meet all of you. I, 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 you should look to me for healing. If you need to just scream heal and I'll turn back and, 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 and do that for you. It's one of my specialties. <laughs> Excellent. <clears throat> Was there more you wanted to ask, Elaine? Well, I'll showcase my talent, but partially. Although a lot of my resources are very, very dependent on situation, so I can't show them all right now. But, and she goes ahead and uh, adjusts the belt on her waist, uh, allowing some bright yellow viscous liquids within them uh, to jostle around a little bit. These are potent potions that'll keep us alive in the nick of things. And additionally, she raises her hand and some of the magic, and she pulls some of the magic from straight from the eyes of her familiar, enters it, conjures up a powerful effect that immediately cl uh, cleans her body of all the dirt and grime on it uh, as she casts Prestidigitation. Capable of stuff of this sort, uh, some powerful bolts as well, and from the other hand, uh, a purple... <coughs> A uh, lance of energy comes out uh, with the strength of a gunshot, uh, per se, as she casts uh, Phase Bolt. And yeah, similar stuff like that, but that's Ooh. just a bit. And she casts Prestidigitation again to dirty herself again. Car, <laughs> I, I, you didn't tell me you could like clean stuff. I'm filthy. Is there oh. something you can do about this? Well, it adds to your character. I didn't want to ruin it for you. Ah, I've been told that before. <laughs> and Ren says that, as all as always, Granny. If you uh, if anything you chance upon anything that you have a question about, I might be able to consult the stars uh, once per night, <laughs> or to have my own library of knowledge, uh, or if you need to know whether doing a particular course of action is going to lead to weal or woe, I can consult the stars. But Granny, was it? And she sort of motions her way closer uh, to the other witch. Uh, what do you bring to this team besides, I presume, uh, leadership skills? <laughs> I do believe that's all this team really needs. You have showcased your magical abilities, the dwarf, his toughness, Roa's skill with blade, the monkey, their skill at many various things, I presume. And so really all that is needed is one to stand back and supervise. That's good. That's very good. Because I can't see from the back of my head. I don't know where things are going or what's, <laughs> what's getting attacked. I need someone to tell me what to do. Very good. And Hi, to and this... To, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, to this row, it would just turn to, um, to Kara and say, don't worry. Uh, we've been traveling together for a few days and she's pretty handy in a fight, too. She's being oh. modest or, well, secretive. It's kind of a thing. I won't hold it against her. Any I do believe we have me? a body capable of this. Oh, yes. be more than capable. You're 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 hired, you and your companion. <laughs> and I turn to I need to please you, says Rin with a smile. They're they're quite acceptable. I it's possible that I'm leading close to her. It might indeed replacements in the future. I, I don't know what lies behind or below this lighthouse, but should some of them fall, I, I presume there are more to take their places. I, uh, as you know, I'll be speaking to Crow's Casks about any potential adventurers that come to town, Granny. Yes, we all, we all have a secondary character backup ready to go. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> 
Very good then. I do believe we are, we have uh, gathered the party and we are ready to venture forth. <laughs> All right. I don't know if anyone got that besides me. Um, <laughs> now I want to, okay, in Pathfinder, when you're not in an encounter, you are in what's called exploration mode. And we don't need to use that word mode. It's kind of, it's just basically when you're not dealing with rounds, but Pathfinder codifies what your character is concentrating on. And it helps uh, give some structure to exploration. You like who is actually searching for traps, who is scouting for the party. And it also might have an effect on the encounter where some people might be starting an encounter hiding and scouting gives everybody a bonus, a plus one circumstance bonus to initiative. Uh, defending means you are raising your shield and have your shield raised before your first turn. Other common activities are searching for things that are hidden, um, such as traps or hiding monsters, or investigating using your knowledge skills to think about, what your, sur about your surroundings. And so I was hoping to know your both your marching order, which you guys can arrange yourselves on this map, and also what your default exploration activity would be. And if you ever want to deviate from your default, you always can say, you know, you know, we are looking at this room before we enter it to see if there's a trap. And then for that period of time, you are searching. And then, you know, once it makes sense, you go back to your defaults. Does that make sense? Gosh. I, I can go in the front and do, I think there's a defense uh, exploration Yes, option, it's, right? uh, yeah, it's defend. Yes, I'll do that. And if, if everyone's cool with it, I can be in the front. And anything you can like... repeat um, every turn is going can be an exploration activity also, like detect magic. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I, I, I'd like to just be sort of constantly avoiding notice. Um, but my plan would be to sort of function as a scout. So maybe kind of staying ahead of the party, kind of looking for, um, so not taking the scout activity, but just functioning yeah. as in that role, right? Where I'm kind the reconnaissance. of trying to, yeah, trying to, that, that does a better word, uh, stealth ahead and, and look for potential dangers. Yeah. Scout's the better word, but it was stolen by the scout activity. Right. <laughs> So you're, it looks like you would be farther in front. What, what, what's the difference between the scout activity and the uh, reconnaissance thing? Um, scout is defined as you are basically, for on behalf of the group, helping the group react quickly to something, to danger. Mm -hmm. And you shout a warning if you see something is threatening the party. So that gives everybody a plus one circumstance bonus to okay. initiative. And because bonuses of the same type don't stack, you only need one person doing that. Could I perhaps do a premeditated uh, search of things as we walk, uh, scanning the environment, per perhaps a survival or nature-based thing mm -hmm. uh, for tracks and or uh, strange occurrences within uh the forest or other wildlife based structures that could allude to danger at least relatively recent dangers yeah that sounds to me like you're investigating and what i do is i um use all i'll, I'll note that you are being aware of your surroundings uh and that you're using your um, referring to your knowledge constantly and also i house rule that you get a free recall knowledge action at the start of any combat mm -hmm. if you're investigating I'll, uh, then I'll take the scout activity, I suppose. Okay. Good. And what would Granny be doing? I'm generally going to be detecting magic, I think. All right. Which is uh, a verbal component. So you'll be uh, casting that spell. Yep. Okay. Be chanting in the back. And it, it, you mentioned marching order. Generally speaking, I'm going to want to be, if not in the back, quite towards the back. I imagine our other witch would probably not want to be in the front either. I'll so be maybe directly in front of you, um, Tilda. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, more annoying details. Uh, familiars, I uh, 
if they're not walking on the ground on their own, you have to command them to walk. You have the option of having them on your person, like on your shoulder, because they're tiny creatures. And if that's the case, they are going to be taxed one action if they act. However, they will move around with you for free. So that's an option. Can I have my chicken? Uh, it has a fly speed, I believe, if that's if I did that correctly. Uh, it would be 30 feet circling around us, just constantly flying around as we walk and just keeping like a 30 foot radius rotating as it flies around the location. That's it has a sensing skill. Let me go ahead and pull that up real quick, mm -hmm. just so you're aware. Soul Sight, I believe, to Whoa. sense life-based uh, things in its perimeter, hence why it freaks out whenever something new comes into its radius. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what it's doing. All right. Life Sense is a familiar ability. Familiars, you get to give them a up to three abilities in the morning. Life Sense allows a monster to sense the vital essence of living and undead, cre undead creatures too within the listed range. You can distinguish between positive energy and negative energy, much as sight distinguishes colors. I will say, however, flying around constantly for a chicken is going to be exhausting. Gotcha. <laughs> so All right, then. you can have it in a constant position in the party order, but it'll be walking. But yeah, you can have it always... Sense. If it'll be too exhausting for the chicken, I suppose I can cradle it in my arms and have it walk alongside us, but it'll have that radius up. Okay. It'll be walking not on your shoulder. It'll be walking. So in, if an encounter were to no, break out... No, just like in my arms. I'm holding okay. It, it, it won't need that exhaustion. No need okay. to push it. All right. Gotcha. Uh, all right. So it would... You're carrying it. Got it. Yeah, if that's all right. Speaking of carrying, what um, I imagine Rex will be carrying his weapon and shield, right? Yes, sir. Williamson will be carrying his... One hand is for the implement. He has an amulet. Mm -hmm. And the other hand will have what? So I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, my tail says that I can uh, carry stuff, if I remember reading it properly. No, it can interact with things and cannot hold items. Okay. So my question was, can I throw shurikens with my tail or not? No. Okay. That was the question. Uh, in which case, I believe I will have... Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm going to rush in melee, so I'll have my rapier at ready. Cool. Yeah. Uh, how does uh, casting spells work if I have like a maze and a, and a shield? You can do verbal and somatic actions, funnily but enough. not material. And that's, that covers the vast majority of spells. But not material. Right. The notable uh, material spell that comes up is the three action version of heal. And releasing is a free action. Releasing something. Okay. A including a shield? Yes. It's not stowed away. It goes, falls to the floor. Does it make a difference if um, my shield becomes a holy item? So is it big, if, I don't know. I, if I guess I, I can give you the the ability. Um, oh, there's a feat. Yeah, it's emblazoned armament for shield. Oh, ex I didn't realize it had that other thing. That makes it very useful. Yeah, that um, means. Uh, I think that's for spells that have the focus. That require focus. The item becomes a religious symbol of your deity and can be used as a divine focus. Yeah, I, I need. We would need to dig deeper into the spells, but I think focus is different from material component. But okay, so the focus doesn't grant me material components. Right. Okay, and Kobe, what's uh, Roa holding? You're, are you muted? I think so. Okay. No, I'm not. Just kidding. <laughs> um, I've just got my, my dog slicer out. One hand, other hand's empty. Okay. And it has that elven name, doesn't it? Laniyana? Yes. Um, it is called... One moment, and I will tell you. 
Um, Lirayanda. Oh, you said that. Yes. Lirayanda. Yeah, you said it correctly. Which <laughs> which may which means um, blade song. Yeah. And Kara is holding chicken. Mm-hmm. Granny is holding what? Um, in her hands. Yeah. Um, I don't even know if she's usually holding anything because she, I mean, she has a sickle and a dagger and a crossbow, but I think she has those usually stowed, sheathed and okay. stuff like that. And her hands are mostly going to be free because she really should not be using those weapons in combat. Mm-hmm. If she's close enough to use those weapons. We have a problem. Mm-hmm. Her crossbow, she's got a decent aim if you want to. Yeah, I I would probably cast a cell before I use that. But All right. I'm going to I'm going to have it I'll have it stowed. Okay. And Georgie, my squirrel familiar, will mostly be on my shoulder or on my hat or something like that riding along. Okay. Okay, great. So it is about mm, If you were to go to the gauntlet, it would be about 3 p.m. And you're headed there now? I think so. Please. Actually, you know what? Before before we leave, mm-hmm. um, I think Roa would want to ask... Um, what's her name? The tiefling elf woman. Not Matilda. Rin, Rin I think. Rin, that's right. Um, he'd say, now... <clears throat> so, you're looking for us to investigate this. See what is causing the light source. Um... I'm assuming there's pay involved? Or are we just doing this pro bono? The usual adventurer's pay, she says. Uh, I just uh, was told by Granny that you already were inclined to go there. The adventurer's pay being what you find. But I I could arrange, I could speak to the mayor. Uh, As you know, we have not had many sales here lately. I could see if the mayor would compensate, but I'd have to show him that there is a specific danger, and I don't want to alarm him at the moment. Very well. <laughs> Rose sounds I, unhappy. <laughs> it's not a matter I wish to push, but he'll kind of look at Granny and be like, seriously? <laughs> yeah, no, Granny did not make I arrangements just... for payment. <laughs> now, I just want to point out that what they're going to offer us to go into this lighthouse is probably like 10 silver pieces or some pittance. I can guarantee you that we're going to sign some fine things far more valuable in that lighthouse than anything this little town could possibly offer us. Ro will open his, his coin purse and be like, hmm, sounds like that would double my current savings account. I will say, <laughs> though, uh... Alerting uh, authorities uh, higher ups and having words stretch along that we may be coming back with some valuables might actually cost us more than you think. Now, very recently I was attacked by a group of thieves that stole most of what I had. And I believe, uh, are we all outsiders to Otari? Because I believe they pick on outsiders, especially. If we come back with a good haul, we might find ourselves at the end of the weapons by the end of the night. Granny is the most familiar with Atari and is herself relatively new, yeah? Yeah, then we're sticking out like a sore thumb already, so why should we push our luck? I bury Uh, most of the stuff I find. (laughs) They can't find it underground. Rin is not very mindful of worldly ways and taxation, and she kind of, her eye, she has a look of recognition. She says, that sounds advisable. I actually um, would hope they wouldn't requisition any uh, interesting occult findings that we find in the ruins. I would like to see them try. Yes, yes, but they don't need to to know, yes? No, of course not. Yes, yes. That's uh, point taken. 
And if there are any bandits who try to waylay us and take our findings, we will bury them in the ground as well. Wouldn't you say? I look at... <laughs> that cat is <laughs> super interactive. <laughs> uh, Tara. Kara. Tara. <laughs> Oh, I have no doubt that we could certainly okay. instill some justice into those thieves. However, I worry that if they knew that we were entering such a dangerous location, we'd certainly be coming back a little less than prepared to deal with them. Ah, I see. Yes. This is, uh, so we find the thieves first, we kill them, and then we go into the lighthouse. Are we prepared for such an endeavor to um. run around Otari? Uh... Slitting the throats of people we find distasteful. <laughs> Suppose that might keep us here, at least in a prison cell, a little longer than we'd like. I already have a bit of a rough time with the city authorities. Did, did, did you say kill them? Slitting throats? Uh, no, I, I think what Kara is saying is that we need to take out the city authorities first so that we don't end up in the jail cells. Is that what you're implying? Mm, down with society, I think you're you're mentioning. Ah, so we destroy the entire city of Otari, and then we go into the, <laughs> the lighthouse. Mm, might Vincent take a while. Is, um, you know, not she's distractible. She's just listening to the winds at this time. I this this conversation same. could go on forever, so long as you are interested in pursuing it. Ah, and then I... neighboring authorities from other regions come in. The battle commences. It continues. <laughs> this is a quite a grand scheme you're scheming up here. I suggest that we first get to level five before we proceed <laughs> with world domination. Right. And I also presume that it's best if we keep it down low, at least until we have our... Uh, uh, our eggs all filed up nicely, you know. Ah, yes. Chicken eggs. Precisely. Ah, very good. I prefer nuts myself, but it's fine. There's less competition that way. I'll turn to Williamson. <clears throat> now, do you eat eggs as well? Um, <clears throat> I eat whatever it is that you eat. And probably then some would be my assumption. I, I, I eat what I usually find. Uh, uh, so some of it probably would make you sick, yes. <laughs> Quite tasty. It's delicacies that uh, you, um, your species is uh, not attuned to, accustomed to. <sighs> A healthy constitution, then. Well, um, shall we be off? I, I believe so. I uh, I have trinkets to find and payments to be obtained. All right. I agree. Let's go. Well, the swamps, uh, this is called the Fog Fen, and it lives up to its moniker as you venture after about 10, 15 minutes. This whole place is known to be haunted with will-o'-wisps and bears, and uh, the, the fog blocks the sun and looks intensely dreary, even though it's only mid-afternoon, as you get closer. Oopsie. There we go. And the sound of frogs and mosquitoes mixes with water sloshing against muddy shores as you near the river that the gaunt light is on. As the mists clear now, a shadow looms from the cloying swamp vapors. A sprawling ruin of stone and wood squats atop an island in the soggy marsh. The upper floors have largely collapsed, leaving only the stone walls of the ground floor intact. Above these ruins towers an out-of-place monument, a colossal lighthouse whose painted walls and iron-cased crown have resisted the corrosive effects of the surrounding swamp. So give me a moment here. Ha! 500 years and look at the thing. It's sinking into the swamp. What kind of craftsmanship is this? Not Certainly not something that would endure well in the mountains, my right friend. 
No, no. This is but a mere pass of the day for a dwarven keep. Then again, we don't really build close to the waters. We don't... And I look around like, we, we don't really do well around the waters. Waters of any sort tend to destroy more than uh, many humanoids tend to consider them capable of. Suppose with enough time, they'll really wash anything down to their depths. No. <laughs> Wash it down, sinking, terrible things. And I just kind of like start walking away from that, from the shore. I think we should go for a swim. <laughs> you note that the the water is pretty shallow here, maybe just uh, four feet uh, in this part of this swamp. And as you scout ahead, Roa, there is a watchtower that you are now in front of two double doors of and it's covered in mildew and mold uh, that appears as green and black smears on the dull stone um i'd like to check the door for traps yeah i'm gonna do a roll here and a secret roll and you do not sense any traps okay is it locked you know what you know what even though i think this map isn't a little inaccurate i think there's doors here that are open the door frames rotted long ago and there's a few collapsed chairs lying on the floor inside this watchtower it emits small heaps of foul smelling gray lumps and there are thick sheets of dusty cobwebs that hang from above, obscuring the ceiling. Hmm. I'll say, you, 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 you can swim if you want, Granny, but I get to stay within thirty feet. That's at the range of my heel. I, I can't go any further. So, can I take a look at the the water? Uh, you said it's not; it, it's pretty shallow. Uh, I mm -hmm. just want to do a quick check as I, I take a look. Does this kind of water or the environment in general look like anyone who'd take a lengthy dip within it could probably find themselves pulling parasites off themselves in 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 any sort of amount of time? Uh, parasites, leeches. This place is rich of full of life. <laughs> I don't think you want to be in this water for very long, uh, unless you'll be predators. spending the rest of your rest of your day picking things off of you, biting things. Um, nope, it's right on the edicts for my god. There's no water. Can't do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Roa will really? will message back to uh, Dragomir since he's kind of in front and say, "Give me a moment to check inside." And he'll, I'll try and stealth into that room. All right. And is everybody where they are standing right now? Well, hold on. Now that you're going to have monsters uh, spring out on us, I'm going to change my mind. <laughs> As he walks in, I'm just going to position myself to guard the door, since I'm like the second one who can do that. I'm really liking the frog and uh, fly noises that are buzzing in my ear right now. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... <laughs> yeah. You'll probably notice a few larger mosquitoes land on Kara, which she doesn't react to in the slightest. I'll, I'll so, cast uh, Guidance on uh, Roa. It's once per hour in. Guidance on a particular recipient. That's all good? It lasts for... Around. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. yeah. So hold on. I'll give him. I'll give him encouragement. Verbal encouragement. <laughs> they also become immune to this. guidance for like the next ten minutes or an hour or I something hour. too, right? Yeah. An hour. Yeah. So you can't spam it like fifth edition. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is our. F um, you know, there are some things I have in my other foundry world that are set up. Let's just give me a second. That are not set up That's yet fine. here. I'm, uh, I'm enjoying the experience of feeling like I'm right next to the swamp. <laughs> as I'm freaking out in my room, wondering where the buzzing sound is coming from. Yeah. <laughs> Immersion. Oh, this is the... Um, <laughs> hey, it's still available. It's through March 2nd. This is part of the $25 uh, Humble Bundle, the Foundry 
hmm. implementation. However, you guys should not get watch it or look at it because it has spoilers. <laughs> All right, well, so you're going to buy it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I still get it. Okay. So you're telling me not to support uh, the humble bundle to get all the great <laughs> no. Pathfinder 2e deals? No, you heard no, it no, no, here, no. folks. It, Ronald does yeah, not support buy Pathfinder. It. Just don't, don't look at this module. <sighs> all right. Okay. As you're uh, sneaking in, Roa, mm -hmm. uh, you see some above the cob in the cobwebs. You see something with bright blue skin up above you in the rafters, and there's a voice, not from that area, but from somewhere else, that says, mm, "Welcome, welcome." Are they speaking common? Very poor. Oh, <laughs> very good question. Um, Kara understands they are speaking in undercommon <laughs> right now. Okay. So. Uh, so you don't understand it. Would I be in listening range? Are they loud enough to to hear yeah, audibly? Yeah, they're loud enough. Welcome, welcome. Eat the magic pixie mud. Hmm. Uh, what do I recognize? What are you talking about? Do I recognize these creatures? Mm, no. Okay. And I did, but I, and I didn't understand what they said, so I'll just kind of look back and be like, so I'll just kind of give hand signals to everybody, <laughs> being like, "There's something up here." Yeah, Wait, Kara, you didn't understand you that there are these piles of foul-smelling gray lumps on the ground. Is it more water? Is there more water inside? It's not water. Calm down. Does this look like feces or is it me? Like it's round lumps. balls? That's that's what I heard, right? Like I'm not crazy. <laughs> if you're yeah, up, if I... you're saying that because you're trying to recall knowledge about it, um, you do not succeed. And okay. you don't get an answer. Okay. Um, I'll just message back to whoever I can see and say there's something blue and mm, unfriendly looking in the rafters here. Feel free to come in if you'd like. I'm, and I'll try and like kind of hide the shadow. That that was that was it, me casting message, by the way. Oh, to it was. I could see, yeah. Don't be shy, and you hear some giggling from above. There are at least three voices up there. I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna walk next to Ra, pull out my sword, and uh, just put myself next to a wall in case I need to climb up there. Kara repeats what they're they're saying to the party in a in a manner just as uh, <laughs> a bit lighthearted and jovial as. Uh, as they do it, just to, to allude to the same connotation. Quick question. Uh, Monkey, do you, I don't know if you have a climb speed. You would be using the climb I, skill, I think. I, I don't know either. Uh, yeah. I took I took a feat that said I, I could... Think... Uh, oh, no, no, I changed it. Mm. I had a climbing tail, I think, was a... Oh, do you want that I changed instead? it later. I, I, I honestly cannot remember. What you got seven mindfulness, which is... Uh... Oh, whoops, I accidentally removed it. <laughs> well, I guess I'm taking the climbing speed. It's fine. <laughs> okay. I'm adding it now. Yes. Should, thank you. Oh, and you have combat climber. Yeah. So that doesn't give me a okay. climb speed. It doesn't give you a climb speed, but it gets you on your way there. You'll see the benefits. Okay. You get to have one hand free to hold something and you get plus two to climb checks. Okay. All right. Okay. Sounds like the party's getting ready and wary. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you do next? I'll speak out in uh, Undercommon. Excuse me, but uh, what are creatures like you doing in a location like this? <gasps> they, they, they yell and shriek. It's a mixture of anger and fear. And uh, uh, you hear, you see one of them 
uh, it looks like Dora's in the front. Um, seems to be climbing up through a hole in the ceiling up above. There's a hole in the ceiling and seems to be climbing up and out. They're on the move! They're on the move! They're coming! What do you do? <laughs> They're like rats Hi. scurrying around in there. Stay still! Stop scurrying about! <laughs> All right, it climbs out. And what it's else? It's scurried about. Are they doing... I'll... Ah, they're attacking. Here we go. Well, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to ask if I give chase, but okay. <laughs> yeah, here we Come go. Come down here so we may speak. Yeah. The th the darts are th being thrown down towards Dora, and we're going to... Uh, I just... Uh, the, in the initiative tracker is in the upper right corner. It looks like a fist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and then I will get cool. some things going That's the first 20 of the game, I believe. Yeah. Ah, very <laughs> good. And every start. first roll of the game. Is and if you were avoiding now. notice, you get to uh, roll stealth for initiative. Um, whatever you were doing at the time, you have the option of rolling that for initiative. Or sometimes a GM tells you you must. So we see oh, I'm the very surprised. The phone right now if we should. What was that? We we see the name of the creature on Foundry. I don't know if you want to hide that or not. No, you can see it. Okay. It's a misfit. Oh. Good. All right. And so my, my defend uh, exploration ability that's always active, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. and um, in the upper right corner, there's a macro to raise your shield, to toggle your shield being raised. Uh, let's get that in your hotkey bar. Upper right corner under compendiums, just type raise a shield and then drag the macro onto your hotkey row at the bottom. And okay, then that becomes it. a number yeah. that you can press. While your token is selected, you press the number. Oh, and that will be relevant very soon. <laughs> OK, Kara's perception bonus was very high, so she knows that they, they were about to start hostilities. <clears throat> so And actually, in character, she screams first, or yells first, I think. Yep. <laughs> So, Kara, what <laughs> do you right. do? And you have three actions and one reaction on your turn. Uh, she's gonna run to the side here, get a bit of cover. Uh, she strides oh, as a first action. Sorry, that's a wall. That's the thick outer wall. Oh, uh, well, she's walking to the outer edge oh, of see. the wall. Okay. Yeah. Getting herself a little bit of cover. Uh, I believe dropping. Her chicken onto the floor is another uh, sure. interaction action? It's a free action to release the chicken. Oh, cool. In which case, out of her pack, she uh, pulls out her uh, her sling. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's an action, I believe. And then mm -hmm. loading it as well would be an action. Right? Got it. Now, if you want to All have right, sight in, into the building, you would want to be in this square here. She does not want sight at the moment. <laughs> oh, I got it. She's ending and just there, for... loading up, and getting ready to go. Cool. And just for clarification, um, the goblins haven't done anything to us yet, right? They're just right. Shifting. You're just aware that they're. You heard martial sounds in their voices. They were about to attack. Okay. Okay, Granny. <clears throat> Can I see them where I am? Uh, no. You heard them. You you know that they. You know that one of them is ten feet above in this square that I'm indicating. So they have the hidden condition. That means you know where they're located. But you, if you try to and you can target it, but you don't. You'd have a fifty fifty chance of not hitting them. We're so, targeting. All right. So can I target two of them currently? Hmm. If you were standing right here, or here. 
All right, I'll go forward to there. Yeah, we see one here in the rafters that was hiding poorly. All right, I... <clears throat> that one's concealed and the other is hidden. I will begin spell casting and cool. electrical energy begins to cover Georgie on my shoulder and I reach over my hand and I caress Georgie, pet him a little bit. And the electric arcs stretch from Georgie to my hand and I stretch them out between my hands and say, oh, going to attack us, were you? And then I'll throw these this electrical arc upward. One end of it hits one of the things up there and the other one goes toward one of the other one that's hitting. All right. So I'm casting electric arc and trying to hit two of these guys. So the one that you can actually see their picture is concealed. Do a d20 flat check. A flat check is just a d20 roll without any modifiers and you need to have a five or higher to target a concealed creature. Nice. There you go. That succeeds. Let's, while we're at it, try to target the other one who is hidden. So you need an 11 or higher. That does ah. not succeed. Okay. Right. So I got one. Put electric art in chat. Great. And then I'm going to target it too so we have cool animation. <laughs> oh. Hover over it and press T. T. Yeah. Here, here we go. go. I thought there'd be an animation. It succeeds on its saving throw, so it's going to take half damage. Yeah. Half damage. Oh, wait. Oh, I did the wrong one. Hmm? Yeah. Give me a second. Sorry. One, one, one. Okay. I think that is going to be six base damage, so it's going to take half of that. Uh, hold on one sec. Just checking that some modules are turned on and animating. Okay. It takes half damage and it squeals and it looks at you in rage. It's, uh, first it was laughing one moment and now it has, you know, its eyes crinkle up and its ears turn upward. Well, you shouldn't have attacked us. <laughs> okay, That's bright fool got angry the second someone spoke in their native tongue. There's something they're hiding. I agree. All right. A dart comes from above, and Dor Dora is flat-footed, so that's actually going to negate the shield bonus, basically. They counteract each other. They both take effect. And here comes a dart being thrown at Dora. Okay, 12 plus 8 is 20. That is going to hit. And hit you for... Three damage. Since you're defending, uh, and we're, since you were aware of them, I'll allow you to use a reaction at this time. And you know what you can do? Oh, you're muted. Sorry, could you explain why I'm flat-footed? Because it was hidden at the time. You couldn't, you didn't have sight on it because it's hiding. Gotcha. Okay, <clears throat> I'll spend my reaction then to, to shield block. Okay, great. Um, and I can... I can negate up to five. Damage. Yes, so that negates all of the damage. And it is going to do as its next action, hide behind the the rafters. It's going to try to. It's going to do a stealth action, a hide action, and it becomes hidden again. It's in that, where that, this, um, it's right here. And I'm going to hide the token from you again but it's still indicated by the square. Okay, Roa. So I had intended to like try and sneak into the room earlier. Mm -hmm. I didn't say like where I was exactly, but I don't know like where oh, you want to Oh, you were inside me. the room. Yeah. Um, you, let's say you are there. Okay. Um, so I'm going to um, I'm going to take a cue from from Granny and uh, try to cast Electric Arc on the uh, target that she hit initially and see if I can bounce it to the other one. Okay. Cool. So you need a D twenty flat check, yeah. Yes, um, against the first one. Okay, and it succeeds. that's a success. Again. And just in case, yeah, for the second one. It is also. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, electric arc. Ooh, 
Oops, I want to target it. Cast. It's not casting. Oh, no, no. I, I think I have to do the saving You need to make the save. Mm -hmm. Ooh. All right. The one that was hidden um, dodges it and takes... Oh, click damage. Where did the damage button go? <laughs> there it is. Thank you. Um, that is five damage. It's going to take half damage. And the other one that was concealed, uh, that was damaged before, takes full damage. Nice. And it shrieks in pain. Okay. And then ah! for now... For my final action, I would like to um, enter Arcane Cascade Stance. Mm hmm. Do you want me to? Do you want me to tell you an idea? Yeah. Uh, you can teleport up there. Oh, I forgot about my <laughs> awesome. Uh, and I only have one focus point. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna save that because okay. it also recharges my um, spell strike. And gotcha. I, I'm gonna see if I can use spell strike first, and then use that to recharge it. But all right. So for now, I'm gonna enter arcane cascade. All right, and you can drag the stance onto your token, and we might see an animation. The animations have not Oops, activated. Didn't work so far. Hopefully, something so happens. So I thought I had it in my hotbar. Hold on. Do do do. And what arcane cascade does? Because he just cast electric arc. The residual electricity around him now infuses his weapon, so his he's going to do plus one electricity damage um, while in the stance. So, all right, I'm trying to. I, I've got it in my hot bar. Mm -hmm. um, the stance. But when I yeah. when I drag it onto my character, it doesn't seem to do anything. Oh no, you don't drag from your hot bar. You just have your token selected, and then you press the keyboard number. So yeah. It doesn't seem to be. You know doing what? Anything. You might have the, the, the ability and not the st the actual token effect in your hockey bar. Ah, uh, you might be right. Let me yeah. So move while that you work on that, this. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay. Hmm. Huh. Select. I have to select a damage type. Electricity. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Electricity. That's what I chose. It's not registering. <laughs> oh. All right. You guys, you guys continue. I want to see Being it. stubborn. So do I. try to. But when I click electricity, it just goes blank. Okay. I put it on, but it's not animating. Oh, well. Oh, well. Okay. Williamson. Okay. Uh, so uh, before we roll initiative, I said that I was moving next to Roa to like, because when we started hearing the screech sure. and I was getting ready to climb. Uh, yeah. Seeing as I'm outside on my token right now, it feels a bit odd. I just okay. moved you in. Do you see that? Okay. Yeah, sure. So they're in the rafters above, and this guy I can see? You can actually see, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, climbing is what exactly? An action? A, it's an athletic like movement? skill action. And if you How... Okay, sure. Go ahead. Explain. Sorry. And these walls are very crumble, crumbly, so it's going to be a 15 that you need for each action. Each action is going to bring you up 5 feet. If you critically succeed, you go up 10 feet. So I only climb 5 feet per... Uh, it's, it's not a lot of feet. Yeah, per uh, action. Because like my, uh, my feet uh, that I just got, like the climbing thing, it's just a flat It just gives you a plus two circumstance. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, in that case, the guy that I see above, I'm going to pull out the amulet from in between the wrappings in my hands mm -hmm. and uh, use my exploit vulnerability against mm. it. So I need to make a. Uh, Esoteric or skill check. Exactly. So let me do that real quick. Uh, Or esoteric, so that's uh, 
That is not That's successful. Good. However, okay. even if you have a regular failure, you still have something that triggers a uh, personal weakness in this creature. Yes, I can use, uh, on failure, I can use weapon strike against magical if they were, like, it basically my attacks count as magical. That's it, I think. And plus two damage. And a flat plus two damage, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have my rapier in hand. If I want to throw a shuriken, because I cannot climb up, mm -hmm. could, uh, is it an action to stow and another action to throw the shuriken? Yes, though you could drop the rape here if you want to use a free action. Um, so how high did you say the rafters were? Uh, ten feet above. Ten feet. I'm gonna ah, screw it. I'm gonna try climbing. So okay, cool. uh, I'll uh, see how well that goes. <laughs> and if you have, when, when you make a roll and you see a pop up um, thing, you can click settings if you don't like that pop up to show up. That lets you put modifiers. I like to okay. mentally apply modifiers, so just do your normal athletics check, and we'll add two from your ability. Uh, so, athletics, please don't fuck me dice. Alright. <laughs> your bonus Plus two, makes that's a 15. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that, that was my second action, I believe, so I start climbing up, uh -huh. and I'm gonna, can I use another action to move again? That's my can. final action. Uh, I I will say that you do have, you you do have uh, you could attack it right now. Oh, okay, he's in range. Also, because you're combat uh, climbing, you're not flat-footed while climbing. That's another benefit. Yeah, uh, sure. In that case, I'll uh, I'll attempt to make an attack. Uh, okay. With my with my rapier. All right. So let's do that. That ooh. <laughs> It has plus two from cover, and that is a hit. Roll damage. Okay. Okay, your oh, exploit vulnerability on. turns that into enough damage. <laughs> ah! This is one falls to the ground, and in undercom, they're yelling, "Flee! Flee!" First blood. <laughs> uh, See, this monkey knows how to fight. Sorry. More French right. accent. Sorry, you see this monkey knows how to fight. I right. yell out when I hear that. Wait a second, they're leaving now? They are, <laughs> and they're do this guy does the balance action to cross the beam. What and was then, the point of this? And then climb. <laughs> they don't they didn't seem to really think it through. Uh, and climbs out. And this guy is not in the initiative, is it? Oh, this guy is. Do Dora's turn. All right. It's my turn. Um, I am going to stride. Mm -hmm. Can I stride diagonally? Yes. And as I get here, I stride. And you can around. walk through allies without any penalty in Pathfinder. Gotcha. I'll say, oi, come down here where I can strike you. My small legs can get up there, and I'll like move my like my mace dramatically and, and menacingly. Um, but I don't I don't think I see any of them. Y you know it's um, there though because of it's hidden. That's there are different levels of stealth. There's undetected, which means you don't know where it is, but mm -hmm. you know exactly where this thing is because it attacked you, and then it hid and became hidden. So you know where it is. I don't know if you have so, a ranged okay, attack. So. I don't know. If... I'll use my stride to get here. Uh -huh. <clears throat> then I'll I'll raise my shield, and then I I, I will I will turn to uh, Roa, and I'll go. Oh, you, you you seem like you can you can shoot things. Here you go, and I'll I'll guidance you this time for reals. <laughs> uh, cool. Go go get them. All right, I'm gonna apply the effect on Roa. Okay. Next is Kara. All right. Uh, I believe you mentioned a little bit beforehand that if uh, people were investigating, they'd get a free. Uh, oh yes. Called recall knowledge. Yes. Can I go ahead and do that as I 
I put my back against the wall, thinking yeah. about what I saw and what I'm hearing. Is there something I could determine about these creatures? Um, this with this check, no. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So what would it be capable of? With this of check, you did not get in top. Oh, nothing related to the middle? Okay, then. No. Uh, what would be the... <clears throat> Uh, the benefit of such a check moving forward, then, what could I potentially call it to use um, it for, then? Like, if they had a weakness to a particular kind of damage. Spellcasters are often very interested in what um, mm -hmm. of the three saving throws are most vulnerable. Uh, knowing right, any special attacks they might have. Would I know what type of creature they are, then? Or would you like, what kind of role could you would I know do? What you would identify it and know what type it is. Uh, I get gotcha. that for free. Which would be then? Yeah. What would the creatures be then? From what I've seen. Oh, that... You do not succeed on this check, so you don't... Your character oh, doesn't Oh, gotcha. Let me see then. Alright. Uh, let me go ahead and stride as I walk around. Mm -hmm. Peering on in. 10, 15, 20, what the heck is going on here? And I'll ask everyone, um, where did they go? Uh, She'll look around, but ask for assistance one, two, if anyone three. else can offer. I'll, I'll point. You up to here. And you actually are... Huh. Yeah. You... They, they point here. <laughs> well... If they asked to flee, then I don't suppose we should push it any further. Unless you all want some bloodthirsty <clears throat> revenge, I won't hold it against you. I'm not. Be grateful we're not injured. They might be going for reinforcements. No, you're right. Well then, <laughs> let's get after them, shall we? <laughs> uh, let's see, another stride. Uh, so what would I need to do in order to get up to this location if that's a if that's a feat we can do? Where? To where it is? Just trying to climb up to, to where these creatures are and sort of give a chase. Climbing? To an extent. Yeah. You can only move five athletics. feet. Right? Five feet if you don't have anything to enhance it. Is that... Gotcha. Would I you like to do that, right? Roll and actually, it? because of the awkwardness of the... You could climb from here... And then the rafters above could carry you around the corner. All right. Would you, you like me to roll an athletics check? Sure. All right, then. I'm particularly the most suited for this, but... She'll go ahead That's and try and get a good foothold as she rolls. Mm -hmm. Whoosh. Okay. Five Retain. feet up. Another. Five more feet to get to the level of the rafters. Oh, I keep rolling athletics? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We can narrate every roll. <laughs> well. Alright. Um, how many more can I do, per chance? Can I keep going each is an action. for my stride value? Oh, each is an action. Alright, so I've already um, strided here. That was another. I guess I failed that one, so that would make three. Oh, you made more than one check? Oh. 14 and... Oh, five. you know what? You didn't make either. I'm sorry. No! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, would you have attempted the second one if you had not... I mean, yeah, yeah. You're, it's like you're a not... child trying to, like, climb one of the poles at the playground. Yeah. <laughs> all zero slippery. progress. Well, all that mildew that's on it is slipping off as you try to gain purchase. You know? You look... The monkey is having no issue, though, and it's like... On guard. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> you are missing a tail. Oh, that, that's what we used to climb. Ah, perhaps you can give me one. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> that's a thing you monkeys can do, right? <laughs> Next is Granny. <clears throat> Otherwise, we turn into Super Saiyan, so no. Now, these things, like, went through the ceiling or something? Yeah, there's a hole in the ceiling. And, and my companions want to, like, go after them at the ceiling. What? We're, just, we're just trying to take them out. Unless the boss has something else to say. <laughs> I'll, 
almost tried to right there. I'm not climbing into the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Granny's uh, not gonna. Yeah, I don't think uh, she has a plus <clears throat> zero athletics. Also, um, I'm, you can talk I'm gonna, while I'm I'm gonna, the restroom. I'll be right back. I'm gonna stride all the way over here. But actually, let's have a break after this turn. No worries. I'm gonna stride all the way over there, and there no. All the combatants have fled the ceiling or something. I'm not gonna just throw spells at the ceiling. Is there a ready action thing where I can like cast a spell and hold it ready to go if needed? Yeah, you can spend two actions to ready an action, but it has to be a single action. And many spells are not that. All right, I am going to Stand there, cross my arms, and say, "Well, I'm. I think I'm pretty much done here, <laughs> and I'm ending my turn. I have nothing else <laughs> that I can do." Do, do you want to uh, yell something mean at that? You can maybe demoralize it. Is what does that do again? Minus one to all of its stats. Sure. All one, right. One action thing. Yep, you will have a penalty for not sharing its language, but... Yeah, just do an intimidation check. Alright, I'm trying to find Intimidating his granny. There you go. Not extremely. I mean, the red eyes to fangs. Plus five's pretty good. Oh. No. (laughs) (laughs) Not extreme. I think having her arms folded and... (laughs) The tears are giving up down in her tone. Okay. Yeah, I'm just... (laughs) You want to take a five minute break? Can we do that? Yep, sure. All right. All right. See you in a minute. Okay, Granny folds her arms in resignation. <laughs> I'm, I'm continuing now. And the bright midflit is going to try to balance across. It becomes visible. It's no longer sneaking. And it's going to do an acrobatics check to get here. So, all these little annoying rules of movement I'm applying to the monsters as well. <laughs> And then it's going to try to climb out. This is an easy one. Okay, it gets out. And with this last action, you hear it uh, yelling. Yelling. Um, you tossed it in under common. And the other one said, hurry up. That's what you hear. Roa. Okay, so there are no longer any enemies that I know that of you see. around here, right? Yeah, so does the group want to pursue or no? Well, I don't know how good I would be at climbing at this point. So I think I would just stride kind of out to here. Mm-hmm and see what I you can see. see. A chunk of, it looks like a, a chunk of giant maggot that's um, on the floor, and it looks like it's rolling off the edge into the swamp. A hunk of giant maggot. And and I, and I these guys are how far away? 20, 20 feet? Yeah, they're above, and they're, they actually are on this vine here. They're making their way across. To this, okay, so uh, they're, they're way out this of reach plat- This platform here. Um, <clears throat> okay. A hunk of maggot. That sounds disgusting. Um, I guess... Gosh, what could I do? Let me try to... I'll, oh, I guess I'll you try know what? It. Completely failing what? at stealth check is this giant creature in the swamp that looks like oh. it is heading towards the, the chunk of meat. Ooh. That thing looks nasty. But it's down in the water. Yeah, and it looks like it's, you know, it's about to reach that maggot. Okay. It has just been um, tossed down. Hmm. Let's see, what's the range on Electric Arc? Uh, 30 feet. So is that too far away? 30... You're within reach. You're within range of it. Okay. I meant of the, of the, the little blue guys. They are. They're too. They're too far away. Too far. What about. 
What, what other cantrips do I have here? Ray of Frost is... That is the long range. 120 right? feet. That's 120 feet. Um, well, I don't really know what this frog thing is doing, and so I'm going to shoot Ray of Frost at uh, the barely injured um, creature. All right. So... And it is flat-footed while trying to balance, so go ahead. Okay, so I need to attack it. Right. You're getting a plus one from my guidance. Oh, that's right. Ah, yes! Plus one, and it's already in there, it looks like. Oh, no, it's not. I have to add it. Is. It is. Okay, I put it there. there. We well, oh, okay. you have to voluntarily use it. So it right. sounds like this is what you'll use it on. Okay. So let's just mentally and... apply it. Whoa! <laughs> that is a Guess critical hit. It. Uh, it takes double damage. It gets minus 10 status penalty to its speeds. Roll, um, roll damage, and then I double it. Okay. Why do I struggle so much with damage? There it is. Okay, it takes 12 damage and falls to the ground. Shloop. Nice. I guess that big frog won't be eating just the maggot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and that was my turn. See, that's Trod's guidance right there. <laughs> Much appreciated. Okay. All right, next is Williamson. I'll uh, attempt to finish my climb. Mm -hmm. uh, so, let me uh, roll a, uh, another athletic, uh, correct? Mm hmm. Character. Sorry, just a sec. Please don't fuck me. Uh, not with that. Are you using your character sheet? Uh, yeah, I'm rolling on the. Oh, okay. The I think sheet, yeah. if you want, you can make that its own separate window. There's a pop out button at the top. You can also roll skills on the main screen by clicking your token and you'll see a little um, row of buttons that appears. Uh, I, I know this option, I just prefer to roll through the character sheet because I, I, I don't know exactly what my character can do, so it's like I'd like to be able to do both. Yeah. Um, so do I fall? What happened exactly? Oh, it's not a critical was... failure, so you just don't make okay. progress. So I just basically wasted an action, correct? Yeah. Can I try again? Mm-hmm. Oh, you Shove. can also use hero points. You have a hero point to reroll something. How, uh, so how do they work exactly, hero points? It's like inspiration, but you get to decide after you roll. Uh, and do they reach? Uh, when do you regain them? When the DM says so? Yes, and you always okay. start a session with one. And so they're, oh. you don't carry them over to the next session. Sure, then I'll use a hero point to reroll that if you don't okay. mind. Ah, you make it. All right, you've reached the rafters. Now, this is the hole in the ceiling, represented by the blue. And <laughs> the balance action is to move half your speed if you succeed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's an acrobatics check, I suppose. It is. It is. All right. Well, let me let me do that. So that's another movement, right? I have to use. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, second action, so to move again. So I guess our first battle, we get to see these little rules here. Oh, 24, okay, 24, that's a critical success. I set the DC to 10, so you get to move your full speed. All right, so I would like to move all the way through the little hole those rascals escaped through. Well, you'll need to climb out after that on your next... <laughs> hey, uh, Kobe, now you get to vicariously experience this. Well, you you get to see someone else dealing with these roles. <laughs> Pathfinder, aka Climbing Simulator 2023. It's a yeah. experience. <laughs> Skill feats um, make these penalties go away. Also, you're not going to be dealing with these environmental things that often. Um, Anyway. That's what I've kind of been wondering, how, how, how frequent, you know, you see things like this. I'm sure it depends on the table and the module. Yeah, and it does, sure. it does. 
All right, this guy's making his way using the balance. Uh, don't I have my third action since I used my hero action and only uh, used two actions? You are correct. Those were not legal rolls by me then. Go ahead. How dare you? Uh, <laughs> I I, uh, <laughs> I will. Uh, so I will continue my movement mm -hmm. and attempt to uh, yeah follow through. So I need to climb again. You told me right. So yeah, it's only a DC five, which I think is an auto success for you. As long as yeah, you don't I think so. I'm just okay. No, it's been Okay. And with that, yeah. Do you mm -hmm. see? Do you see them? Let me just put you over here. There you are. You're actually in this square right now. Okay. Night, sorry. All right. You see, he sees two of those uh, blue goblins uh, trying to balance across this vine, and one's right next to him, and is flat-footed at the moment. Okay, Dora. All right. It's me. I will turn to Granny, and I'll say, We need some leadership! The party is splitting! <laughs> and I'm going to stride. Um, over here. Oh, that bridge just fell into the water. <laughs> oh. The bridge just fell yeah, into the water. Yeah, it was very Crap. poorly constructed. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one thing. The dwarf right. in the, the water. The one thing I didn't want to happen. <laughs> I'm only five feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> what? Okay. And Roa, uh, you get a uh, reflex save. To try to okay. hold on, grab this edge here. I have a ledge. All right, so yeah. reflex save. Now we get to learn the I'm swim just... action. <laughs> Never. Why I'm just, I'm just dreaming with like. Armor. He just sinks. <laughs> He's, it's over. With oh. like water in my mouth. I'm just like. Oh, Granny, little chip, no! <laughs> Good luck. I mean, this will be that you know you're gonna look back. This was your first level one um, battle, and be like, yeah. I'm you fall into the water and die from falling down. <laughs> die. Okay, Roa on bridge rubble. Loa, Roa grabs an edge, and you have a free hand, so you don't have to drop anything. So you are not okay. falling in the water. I, I will say because you're on the shore, you're not even in the water hardly, so you can easily just stand up without a check. In the meanwhile, okay. Dora is just in the water. So am I? Am I up uh, still at like the like, or am I down at water level? You're kind of like halfway in the water. Okay. Yeah. But I have you as prone mechanically. Okay. Okay. Well, we have two more actions, Dora. All right. It'll take so you how, two how high to get onto the shore? Huh? How high out of the ledges? Um. They are like, it's a bridge, so there's like, you'd have to climb up, but you also have to reach the ledge. And it's a very, it's a DC 10 swim check to travel to it. And then even, even climb. though my, okay, but you said, just said the water was um, <clears throat> four feet deep, right? Here, so or, it's or uh, it... more like, um, yeah. It's a little deeper than that. It's it's much okay. more shallow. The rest of this, the the water is ten to fifteen feet deep, and here it's, um, it's a little deeper. They decided to build the bridge here. Okay, 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 okay. Um, and you said it would be like a DC ten to to climb the ledge. Ten to swim to it. Fifteen oh. to climb. And both are athletics? Yes. I could do it. You don't need free hands for this either. And this is not third edition where armor really sucks with swimming. Okay. Hmm. Okay, no, you know what? I'm going to be a hero. All right? This is what Dora is. <laughs> I'm going to... Oh, but I'm swimming, swimming. What what penalties would I have like trying to fight this thing like with my AC? Uh, aquatic combat. You were flat footed. Okay, that makes sense. And minus two to slashing or bludgeoning attacks that you make. 
Okay. Attacks, okay. No fire spells. You have resistance five to acid <clears throat> and fire. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I already stride. Your shield down. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I st Okay, twenty feet. I think um, this aquatic predator, you want to get out of the water. Are you threatening me, Ronald? Just, just a little, <laughs> yeah. just a little metagaming hint from your friendly GM. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it has. Uh, I don't know how. To, if it's going to attack you, it has three sources of food right now. So. All right, it is distracted. I right, fine, fine. I'm going to try and swim and climb the ledge uh, to, to the other side. Yeah, uh, but you do need a free hand. You need two free hands for. You see, I didn't need my free hands. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, Ronald. I see how this is. All right, yeah. I'm going to. I'm gonna swim my way over here. I guess that's a stride. Yep. Um, so that's two actions. Yep. I'm. Um, um, and I'm gonna use my last action to. I mean, it seems like it's eating. So I'm gonna raise my shield here so that I can. Is it a free action to like? I think raising your shield is uh, a good idea. Yeah, yeah, but like, can I put my weapon? <laughs> like, can I sheath my hammer? That's an action. Okay, so I'll have to do that next turn then. Um, I'm all out of actions, boys. Can I raise my shield to protect myself? Welcome to Pathfinder. He's swimming. I'm he's raising his shield. <laughs> what is an God, action? Ice cream. Me. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for me. All right, because you're such a, you know, it it sees food, but it also its predator instinct is in. So I'm gonna roll a d4, and it's gonna go after the dwarf on a one or a two. So here we go. Oh, it's going for the for the blue guy. Munch, <laughs> munch, munch. Nice. And Good thing I shot him down. Feeding. You're welcome. Yes, and I've not given away a hero point uh, yet. Roa, you get a hero point. Woo. And I should give away All two right. more. I'll think about it. Kara. All right. She's not making very much progress with this climbing endeavor. She just <laughs> noticed what's going on uh, with Dora at the moment. Uh, and we'll stride just this, 25. Just have this image of like <laughs> this dirty redhead witch like running up to the wall and just being like, <laughs> and just like. <laughs> She'll, she'll lean people. down uh, and then crawl on all fours, running down. <laughs> with, this, with, this little, like, with this little hey hey uh, from Moana standing next to her, just like pecking at the ground that doesn't have a beak. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> just like, face uh, bashing. <laughs> no, are you fine down there? It looked like an awful bad tumble. That, that was... That was for you, Dora, right? Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't know how much... Can, can I, like... Can we talk, like, out of... That's uh, fine. Out of our... It's, it's fine, yeah. This well, is not fine! There's so much water! It's in my mouth! <laughs> <laughs> I, I go by critical roll time. You can talk, you know, during your turn and have it go beyond... All right, well, happening. I guess I'll conjure up a helping hand. Uh, and with that, uh, she will um, use a bit of... Uh, magic that she begins growing uh -huh. and expanding within her ha hands to conjure up another hand as she casts Mage Hand. Okay. Uh, I believe she can conjure it up next to uh, Dragomir. And yeah, was... and what I'll do as I'll, I'll allow you as you're preparing to aid, I'll say. Mm -hmm. And so as a reaction, when he tries to do something, you get to do a spell casting check I'll allow. Everything is based right. on the same math, so I'm um, and to try to aid. Gotcha. Uh, and she'll his climb um, check. have the helping hand go out and offer that support. Okay. Granny! What are you thinking of your uh, team at this point? Incompetent. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, 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 hey what? You spent your turn with your arms crossed. Who's not helping? <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> I'm spectating. You. <laughs> you do something. 
<laughs> the dwarf keeps sputtering about water in his mouth, but if he would close his mouth, there would be less water in it. <laughs> Can't argue with that logic. <laughs> so, he's in the water. Yeah. The dude's... Is Roa hanging from the ledge, then? Yeah, he's, like, halfway in the water. His, he did grab on to the edge. <clears throat> he does have... His legs have... His feet have purchased. He just needs one action to hoist himself up. Well, I need, I, need, I need two actions to, like, stow my weapon. My weapon and armor uh, and shield, right? Yeah, stow, stow, climb. And then climb in. All right, I'm going to stride to the edge here. Mm-hmm. Action one, retrieve rope. Action two, and then two I'm going to... To get something yep. stowed away. You have to take oh, the is? backpack off and then take the rope out. Okay, well, then I have rope in my hands. <laughs> this is action tax, uh, you know, the, the lesson. <laughs> All right. I'm ready on my next turn to use several actions to lower the rope. Keep your mouth shut in the meantime. <laughs> and I think that's my turn. You know what, though? If you want, you could have done that back here and then thrown the rope. <laughs> throwing the rope? Yeah. No, I, I, I'll i okay. do as I described. All right. Yeah, because she spent an action walking over and muttering. Right. Yep, I understand. But that's what I declared, and I don't believe in I understand. Like, like retroactively metagaming type of thing because it was more uh like whatever effective to do it a certain way after the fact like it, so yeah okay I'll, I'll keep my action I understand yeah, okay if you hold it it's truest to character per se all right what, yeah what that's done in that moment yeah. blue guys turning yeah, yeah. around and looking at Williamson and it is trying to it's a little distracted it's scared now so it has a penalty to this acrobatics check uh ooh but it does quite well and goes at full speed with one action. One, two. Uh, do I get an attack of opportunity or? Do not, unless you're a fighter at level one. Yeah. Okay. That's a 20 foot speed, it's gonna continue. Oh, um, goes halfway, goes here. Oh no, it's only over here. and makes it all the way here. Okay, let me double check that. It needs to be 40 feet total, yep. Okay, Roa. All right, well, since the frog isn't posing too much of a threat yet, mm -hmm. um, I suppose I will pull myself up with my first action. Yeah. And then I'm going to just shoot another um, Ray of Frost. Let's see. Um, that guy looks like he's about to get away. So I'll I'll go for this one. Uh, the Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Ray of Frost, Ray of Frost, Ray of Frost. Where'd you go? Doo -doo -doo. Sorry. Attack. That's another solid hit from Roa. 18, okay. Yeah. So, damage. And that's seven damage, and I'm gonna force it to do a balance check. I, 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 I don't know if that's in the rules, but I remember it is in first edition. Okay, it stays on. Okay, Last. Williamson. And it's um, slowed by 10 feet, right? That's a... It's a Critical, I think. Oh, that's only on a critical success. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This guy is on the rope, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go after him. Oh, okay. Uh, DC I 10 to... balance check. All right, let me give you that. Uh, balance is acrobatics, yeah? Yes. Okay. So let's do that real quick. And ooh, twenty! You needed a critical success to get to it. Okay. Mm. Two oh, more actions. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, well, I shall attack. Uh, yes. Well, sh does it look wounded, like uh, a bit? Not? Yes, it is badly it injured. Just... That that should show up when you hover over it. Uh. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. 
Uh, sure, I shall. Uh, in that case, I'm not going to use my exploit vulnerability. I'm just going to straight up attack. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, so let's see. That is uh, a hit. Okay. Ooh, there's the animation. So let me roll for damage. Okay, you poke it like a pig, and it and it's on the end of your rapier. Um, you uh, could... Can I? Because uh, like I, it's impaled and it's on the rope, right? Uh -huh. Can I just like toss it in the water towards where the frog is to distract it away from my companions? Yeah, yeah, you can so actually. Just, otherwise, like... you'd have a trouble balancing holding it. Yeah, no, I just want to, like, toss it towards the frog so, like, it, you know, goes oh. there instead of towards right. Dora. You see it's long tusk. It's already feeding into the first one, and now it has another meal next to it. Exactly. That's, that's what I want to do. And a third action. Um, so, uh, I'm, I'm not familiar. Doing exploit vulnerability now is useless, right? Because it doesn't last until my next turn. Or No, no, it, it, it doesn't end. It oh, is it doesn't per end. creature, though. Okay. Uh, so you'd have to do each creature separately. Uh, anyway, I, I don't want to do the frog. I want to do the, um, the other guy over there. Yeah. Uh, is he in range? I can, oh, it's anyway. It's sight. So, sure. Okay. I'll uh, I'll do a, a nix. Although I am in the middle of a rope. They don't look like they have ranged weapons, do they? This guy, all they saw in hand was they, they dropped a bunch of darts earlier when they fled. Oh, okay. Uh, in that case, I'm going to uh, try it again and try to get closer. Okay. So you need another acrobatics? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Nine. successful. <laughs> Though I'm gonna give you a hero, you're one of the, my hero point receivers. I realize because of what you just did, and actually I'll... you're my second hero point receiver because you st stuck the other guy earlier. Sure, I'll take it. <laughs> I like I'm playing favorites now. Uh, <laughs> it's it's the cute monkey uh, image. That's that's the reason why. Sure, I'll use the the hero points then. Might as well, because they don't All last right. uh, to to the next session. So right, right. Okay. Sure, right, from a six to a seven. To <laughs> you're able to travel. This succeeds, though. You're able to travel um, ten feet. It's ten feet because of. Wait, are are you a dex build still? Yeah, I'm sixteen dex and. Uh... Okay, so you're at twenty five foot speed now. Okay, that is it. All, All right. right. That ends my Dora. turn. All right. Uh... <clears throat> Unfortunately, I don't have the action economy to get to the rope, but I'm going to uh, stow my Warhammer, favorite mm -hmm. weapon of Trud, and uh, my holy shield, and then I'm going to use my action to climb up the ledge. Uh, Is he like gonna... a fiercely proud dwarf? Is he completely beside himself right now? This is not good. <laughs> this is... People are going to make fun of me for this. Uh, I'm going to do my athletics, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, I don't know if I have to add anything, but here we go. Okay, good, good, because otherwise you've started to sink. All right, you have now made it. Um, and I think I would have you flat-footed here. Should I? Right. Nah. That, I usually don't do that. Okay, good. All right. You're there. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to heave, but I was told by, gra by Granny to not open my mouth, so I'm swallow whatever's <laughs> in there. I don't know what I hook in, but I swallow it. That's Are there leeches? Getting a tongue lashing from the boss. All right, Dogmatic Slurk, honestly, is spending three actions munching. It is kind of not interested in you guys right now. So is the party, I guess it's all about this last guy here, and only Kara and Granny can do anything before it acts. Uh, if it's my turn, then? Mm hmm all right, I'll go ahead and peer over. Uh, take a look at what's to the right. I'll, I'll move your token, but actually that is an action, kind of. Yep. Oh, straight into the water? <laughs> no, you, I'm moving your token so uh, you can see it. All right. But you're just kind of leaning out and making sure you're not falling in. I'll lean out. Can I see the... 
Just through coincidence of timing, can I see this thing scurrying over what looks to be some form of vine? I'm also on the vine. Uh, I am also on the vine. Please do not burn it. I know. <laughs> I repeat. Yeah. Also on the vine, please. <laughs> I'm trying to be, get clarified on what it leads to. Sorry, let me make sure I get this right. Is well, for right wall? now, I'm mostly claiming, can I see the, the enemy? You can't. All right. You can't. Let's see. Uh, hmm. Yeah, it is a wall. Can I have my mage hand float over towards this uh, this creature and give it a little... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that would be the shove action, which is not... It's not oh, it's not a thing the mage hand, hand could do? All right. No. What this vine leads you to be clear is a little walkway that, you know, an archer that's defending the castle could walk out to. Alright then, praying for good fortune, she'll instead uh, cause a potent uh, bolt of force to strike out, and could I potentially use phase bolt targeting the creature? Yes. Alright. Let me go ahead and cast this. And bam. This is the one that like ignores Ooh. cover. That is a critical hit. Nice. Nice. I think this is how you roll damage. So ten damage, which is exactly what you needed. Nice. <laughs> that, <was me. laughs> that is our fourth hero point of the day. And it also falls uh you know, a third blue gremlin. Uh, falls into the swamp. See, that Ms. Ends Matilda, that. how do you like them apples? I'm quite capable. <sighs> Granny, my turn. No, no, she was she was asking you um, if you were impressed. Not bad. She was liking right? how how you liked her apples. <laughs> Be careful, because from I'm, witches, that's a very loaded question. <laughs> I'm a little, I'm still busy figuring out this rope in my hands, and now the dwarf has climbed out and doesn't even need the rope and stuff, so I barely even hear what the other witch says, and I glance over and give her a polite smile, um, which she may recognize. It's, it's You know how when this, my wife does this a lot, but I'll say something in English. Her, her native language is Spanish, right? And so and she'll just give a polite smile and a laugh because she doesn't understand me. I'm doing the exact same thing to the other witch right now. Oh, so uh, <laughs> meddling with that rope. Oh, I'll leave you to it. <laughs> it's funny because like, it's the exact thing I do to my uh, in-laws when they uh, talk to me in Romanian because like, sometimes I don't uh -huh. get it because they speak so fast and I'm yeah. like, uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, it looks like all the the little creatures have been dispatched. Uh, where is everyone? Seems like we it's, lost a few. Am I the only one who noticed the um giant monstrous frog here? I don't know if we need to dispatch it or if we can. Everyone's if going to. It, I think. If it's going to come after us. I threw a couple of corpses at it. Should I shoot it? Hmm. I don't know. It depends on how high it can jump. Perhaps we ought to move on before it uh, finishes its meal and looks for another. Well, if anyone can measure how far apart its eyes are, if you're, so long as you're not uh, smaller than the distance, it shouldn't find you edible. Can I try to approximate that with a check? <laughs> Seeing as yes. I'm just above the front. <laughs> I am very girthy, so, so whatever the distance is. I'm, uh, I'm your meal. Sure. Okay, your knowledge tells you. What's your nature bonus, uh, Williamson? Let me give you that real quick. Oh yeah, you can recall knowledge on any creature with esoteric lore. Yes. So you'd have a plus that's six that's... right now. Yeah. Um, you know that it eats anything, meat, and however, it has a lot to eat right now. It's uh, it usually does not. Um, it's not aggressive. It, it hunts for, to eat. 
We're talking about a small frog, right? I'm not too uh, sure how the bigger ones tend to fare. From what I remember reading in the library, I think this one uh, hunts uh, a fragile prey, so Granny, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so I was saved the whole time? Uh, yeah, I, I think so, yes. Only the Granny. Granny, be careful when you cross. All right, well... well Perhaps we could construct some sort of rope bridge now that the one that was here has gone out. I'd just as soon not have to swim my way across. Actually, and in fact, wait a minute. Hey, Ronald. Yeah. <laughs> Can I cast Dimensional Assault? Attack do, do me. I, do it. Do I have to make an attack? Do you know what I mean? Like upon teleporting? To. Okay. Um, yeah, in that case, I'm going to be like, uh, oh, wait, what am I thinking? This is easy. And I'll just like... Like pop out of existence and just reappear um, next to <laughs> just a dimensional high five next to Dora and be like, <laughs> "What does everybody think about that? What sort of trickery is this? Such Magic. power! Didn't sense it before. Magic um, is such a cheat. <laughs> <laughs> he'll just he'll just shrug and act coy." Is Williamson just standing there at like <laughs> the line? I am. Uh, I'm, uh, can I just for effect? I am like upside down, like using my tail wrapped around the vine and just yeah. looking, kind of like a bat, <laughs> just hanging upside down. Uh huh. I'm uh, just like a wet dog with my there, hair all matted and messed up. Are there doors on both ends? Pr- primarily doors of which ropes could be tied to their handles. Yeah, you can find things to fasten ropes to. Okay. Perhaps we can get a rope from one door to the other and then climb? Right. Granny, throw me the rope. I throw the rope across. Does it fall in the water? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm not going to call for a roll. It might (laughs) fail. If you want to roll to assure... In the fiction that she threw it across, I don't know, but it's a fifteen foot multiple gap. attempts. If I can't throw a fifteen foot coil of rope across a fifteen foot gap, <laughs> um, to, like, um, I, I, I would have indicated to like attach it to something first. So like do that like and then rope. throw. Right. You got the whole you got the whole rope. I threw the whole thing across. <laughs> right, <to you>. right. <laughs> then I'll attach it securely <laughs> and I'll throw it back over. Okay. All right. Uh, can I finish crossing? I'm supposed to do with this. Um, Say, someone asked something. Uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, I, can I finish crossing? Because I'm like on this bridge thingy, right? So can I go all the way through? You could. Okay. okay. Um, make an acrobatics check. Sure. <laughs> oh God, just critically fall. fail. Watch me fall. Yeah. Just just roll some d20s, I suppose. You see the little dice tray at the bottom? You can also roll Oh, yeah, it. sure. I rolled acrobatic, sorry. 17. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. One more. One more. Mm-hmm. You okay. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, you make, you, you look in here and you see um, a, a, st- a 15-foot stone walkway. There's double doors to your left, double doors to your right, and... Uh, it's, the main keep is to the north, but you saw that there is a large stone outbuilding that this connected to. But mm-hmm. standing in front of the southeast doors is a seven-foot-tall skeleton dressed in armor that is made of gnarled roots, bones, and rusted metal. And it clenches a morning star in one weathered hand with the weapon's heavy spiked tip resting on the walkway at its feet. Run away! Run away! Um... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Does the skeleton look alive? Like, you know, for a skeleton? That's such does a it, Does it look undead? Question. Yeah, does, does, it, does it look like it would smash my face into? It has not moved. It, it hasn't moved. I'm gonna, yeah, slowly, just like carefully, just think like a few steps back, just like whisper towards the other. Guys! You also hear, you also hear some more, more of those voices of those creatures behind those doors. But it sounds like they're, you know, kind of like talking to each other. They're alerted that there is a fight outside, and you're not sure what they're going to do. And you don't understand their language. So, uh, 
on those doors I hear them? Uh, to the right, you hear to them. To the right, okay. I'm gonna, yeah, take a few steps back and just like whisper, you know, like a, a yelled whisper, like, guys, guys. Could we hear that? Okay. <laughs> and um, you also hear voices, uh, Dora and Roa, uh, behind these doors. I'm, okay. Oh, just the ones that are just directly behind us? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I will, well, like, I'll send a mess. Well, you know what? Yeah, I want to keep it quiet, so I'm, I'm going to cast message. There's a door opening, Williamson, uh -oh. and you see one of these creatures right here. <laughs> and what were you doing, Williamson? You were I, I was taking scouting. a few... Yeah, I was, I was scouting. And, and this guy was stealthing, and his... Um, his stealth would have been a plus seven and 14 stealth versus your, he was avoiding notice and it, you heard it coming and you heard it opening the door. What would you have done? So I heard the door open. Can I quickly hide before like the door opens? Yes. And that is a secret check hiding. Okay. Okay. So I need and to... you see it. Um, you see it walking across, walk past the skeleton, open the door, and close the door behind it. And you hear it talking. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. And you hear another one yelling back at it. I assume I don't understand. <laughs> I, um, I assume I do not understand this uh, language much. You don't. Uh, I'm going to yeah try to like yell whisper to like like walk back a little bit on the vine and just to see if I get like Kara in my line of sight. Yeah. And I'm you just going to... chicken? <laughs> chicken. <laughs> not the chicken. Looking for Kara, not the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to like gesture to like come basically. I think Granny can see you. Granny and Kara. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just gesturing to both, like, an intensely looking at Kara, because I'm, I'm going to point at my big old ears and just tell her. The chicken doesn't acknowledge you at all, but Kara turns <laughs> and sort of, like, squints at you like, like you're crazy, and then does that to, like, see what's over there, and then a shrug. Like, what the heck is going on? Okay. okay. <laughs> Are you daft? <laughs> Get down here with the rest of us and quit screwing around. I, uh, I, I will do exactly what Granny asks. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Good choice. Now, was there anything of interest over there, by the way? Anything dangerous? Guys, guys, shh, there's voices right behind this door. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I walk on this? Like on, on the... You can, you can. And you see that there is a, uh, okay. a corpse here, by the way. I'm just going to... Ronald. Yeah? Uh, gotta go. gotta, I got to get running, dude. All right. Uh, what's our policy uh, for Granny? Or do, do we want to break? What do people want to do? Uh, so you, you guys, I'm perfectly fine if somebody else wants to run Granny. And if you get her killed, I don't care. I'll just make something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That uh, sounds like what that's, happens. That's my, that's my personal policy. I, uh, and I want to keep playing. Okay. So let's plan for the same start and end time for next time. Yeah. Anyway, I kind of see Granny as... We've got to have talk to Granny. Granny is like, you know, yeah. the boss. Yeah, part she, of the team. She's the self-declared right. boss of the team. So Okay, Luke should go, but I do want to get... Um, some thoughts from players though. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah, run. Do I need to do anything special with Zencaster to make sure you get your stuff? Are we good? You wanna get that green check mark and I got it. good. Yeah. I think you're fine. Also gotta get that crazy expression. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. The emoji. I feel like we got some already that I don't need to ask for. Give you uh, one. Oh and people earned some XP so far. You earned Oh, yeah, I forgot about XP. Okay, okay see, see you later. 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 See you later. See you. Bye, bye. You've earned 70 XP. <laughs>
seven T. Seven zero. Nice. <laughs> but a lot, I, I did not credit the RP because there's so much XP in the dungeon. I might change my mind, but um, it, it's fine anyway. It's yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, okay, mind. cool. Um, I'm gonna ask uh, first Kobe, who has been around. I want to ask him what his thoughts are first. What for this session? Anything new that you learned? Um, yeah, you know, I don't know that there was though. I guess I kind of already voiced the thoughts that have been going through my head, which is, and, and frankly, that have been going through my head as I've been delving into like creating Pathfinder characters, right? A lot of the times, especially the video that I have that's coming out for me tomorrow is um, the thief rogue. And rogues get so many skill feats, right? Every single level they get a skill feat. And it's like, oh man, like some of them seem to have very obvious uh, practical application and a lot of them are like you know well you can balance better you know more quickly or you can climb you know more effectively and things and and i'm often wondering as i'm sifting through the hundred plus skill feats like i wonder how much my character would actually use this and obviously it would depend a lot on the table on the campaign the gm who's running it etc um but I mean, this very first combat encounter found found all of us like, oh, I can't climb very well. Oh, I couldn't swim very effectively. Oh, I'm having a hard time balancing along this thing. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. I guess we'll we'll see if it's if it's an indicator. But but I I can definitely see those skill feats. Like, seems like what they tend to do more than anything is improve quality of life. You know what I mean? Just make things a little bit easier and more seamless for you to do when when you need to the question is how often will you need to but mm. yeah it, it can I'll point get... out those mites had to make those same checks too and i was rolling on my end right so it can definitely down. get a little frustrating when you know the the three action economy is simple it's great a lot of times it's whatever but then sometimes you know yeah you'll find yourself like oh i need to get some rope out okay backpack rope and then I had to move. Okay, my turn's over. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, that can be a little frustrating, right? When when movement and when movement is not tied to, well, I sorry, when movement is not separate from uh, your actions, right? And there are a lot fewer things that you can do as a free action. Um, then sometimes that three action economy can feel not as awesome as it first feels when you f first realize that you get three actions every single turn, you know, coming from D and D it's like, oh, I get three whole actions every single turn. Well, yeah, but you, trust me, like you're going to use them. They go away fast. Yeah. That's yeah. what I realized today. <laughs> That's something that I'm going to have to deal with a lot. Useful here. We're a combat climber, which monkey has mm -hmm. lets him uh, have used one of his hands while he's climbing to mm -hmm. fight. He can fight with it and he's not flat footed mm -hmm. while he's climbing. The other one is steady balance. You, um, when you succeed, you critically succeed on a balance check, and you're not flat-footed. Which means that you um, move at regular well speed when you're balancing, as opposed to half. Yeah. Right? What this does is, yeah, it's kind of like the action tax. It's like a tax. You can say it that way, but it also means that when you choose an ability, you feel a concrete improvement, whereas. Um, especially in 5e, since the your proficiency bonus doesn't go up very much. Like a level one rogue might roll, might do a better athletics check, a higher number than a level 15 fighter. And so it's a little harder to, um, there, there's more, um, if, if you like that, you, there's more rule support to show you're getting better at your skill. Okay, um, Evan needs to go. So what were you thinking? Uh, so far, it's my first uh, actual like fight in Pathfinder. Uh, yeah, the action economy is different, but it's enjoyable because you you do. I mean, back to what Colby said, because like it is enjoyable when it works, <laughs> like when you do a lot of things <laughs> in your turn and you're like, oh my god, I did so much. But when you're like, I used one of my actions to move five feet, and you're like, that 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 feels bad. <laughs> it's not great. Um, <laughs> Or I used one of my action to do nothing also, to not even move, right? which is odd. Um, 
but it's uh, I don't know. I'm enjoying it so far. I'm discovering the system. Uh, I do think it has a lot of strength. Like so far, even like on the character creation, I've enjoyed that uh, Dex is not like a god stat like it is in Five E. Uh, you don't get to add it as much to your damage stuff like that. And um, Pathfinder definitely feels more uh, complex, I would say, than 5e. Like, 5e has super easy onboarding, right? And, like, me as a person who makes content for the game, super easy to make content for it. I can imagine Pathfinder being a bit more complex for that. Uh, what else should I say? Otherwise, no. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, you go I, ahead. I was just going to say, uh, on that note, like, usually when I'm creating character builds for my channel, I'll take a, a D and D character to level 17. And that's like in an hour long video where I'm kind of going into every decision mm -hmm. that you make and explaining why I'm choosing what I'm choosing, et cetera, and crunching numbers and all that kind of stuff in my pathfinder. My first pathfinder build took me an hour to get to level six. <laughs> <laughs> now, part, part of that to be fair was because like I am learning too, and feel like I have to explain You're explaining more. the system as you yeah, know. I'm explaining more than I would right for a D and D build. The one that I'm releasing for tomorrow, I managed to get up to level nine in an hour, but it's still like half as far. And I'm kind of trying to decide I might I might have to just kind of start glossing over more stuff like skill feats. Just pick your favorite. I don't see anything here that's really going to impact more than just kind of ease of life Flavor, yeah. concept type stuff. That's Flavor, what I've been yeah. doing. Scan yeah. down, see one that has a cool, interesting name that you think right. might work with your character. If it fits enough, just grab it. Look, right. yeah. look for some more when you build another character. Yeah. That's exactly what I've been doing for like, because I was like, I'm a monkey, I can climb. Is there something that allows me to climb? And I was like, that, okay, cool, thanks, I'll take it. <laughs> That's... I think it's a higher level ancestry feat that has the tail thing as a prerequisite. I'm going to guess is level five or level nine. Mm. And there are higher level skill feats like uh, that give you a climb speed. I think you have to be a master in athletics to so get that'll a climb be cool. speed. Can, that uh, any for any character, people. even a non-monkey, could get. Uh, okay. well, so the standing on. up problem, Kobe. You know about the kip up feet. Yeah, yeah. I took yeah. that on my on my thief because it's like acrobatics ooh, lets you stand I... up as a free action yeah. and it does not provoke reactions. So, you know, it's more defined. All right. Okay. Do you have to go, Evan? Okay. I probably will. Yeah. All right. All right. See later. you later. Bye -bye. See ya. Okay. All right. Bye. And uh, Rex and Blaine. Feel free, Rex. Okay. Um. I have a lot of mixed feeling because there's a lot of stuff that I really like, and then there's a lot of stuff that I really don't like. Um, I will say that I've never had this much fun creating a character. Like that. That is <laughs> definitely one of the biggest, like, most interesting parts about Pathfinder is like really creating this very unique thing that you feel like very unlikely that anyone else is going to be able to, um, that is going to copy, right? Like I, I, it's very unlikely that I'll be playing with someone that has exactly what I have, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, it's, I've definitely noticed that there is a lot less like feats or abilities that just let you do things like just successfully just do things, which is something that D and D does a lot. Um, you're, if you're good at something in D&D, you can kind of just do it. In here, there's definitely less of that. Um, but... So, um, the character that I'm playing, mm -hmm. a cleric, melee cleric, um, with a shield, the race of shield action. I don't know how controversial this is in the Pathfinder community. Mm -hmm. Um... But I can, I, can, I can see that this is going to like really limit me because I'm taking an action penalty on every single thing that I do if I want to use my if shield. If I want to use it. If I want to use it. So, because the, the three action system for Pathfinder, one of the coolest things I think is the ability to be able to turn your move action into something else, which I think is really fun. But if I want to use a shield, like I can't use a sh I can't benefit from my shield, move and cast a spell. Um, I only get the one attack if I want to move as well. If I want to use my shield, um, if I cast a spell, you have to use my shield or move. I think that can be a little bit tricky. 
Um, I'm not sure still how useful the shield is. I, I get the impression that it's really, really powerful, which is how it's kind of balanced. I... It, it's still too early for me to tell anything, really, right? Like, I mean, it, it, this is just my first game, so I have no idea how it's going to play out in terms of how much I enjoy the uh, the economy. But um, that's a concern that I have. Yeah. Um, I was telling Ro Go ahead. Oh, I'm just looking for... I think there are there's there are ways through archetypes. I don't know if clerics really mm -hmm. have them, but um, there, there's like a level one fighter feat that you could get through an archetype that lets you raise your shield as a reaction. And yeah, I saw that from I'm the, looking Bastion. At the Bastion archetype to see if there's a way to not have, of to course raise your that shield. would mean no opportunity attack, but if you were, which is fine, but what it would mean for me is no shield block, hmm. which means it's uh, entirely that, an action to, because I'm, I'm, I'm building for, for shield block. So my idea was that I was going to do the armaments, on my shield because it gives me a an extra um whatever endurance on my shield um then i was gonna probably try and get a magical shield i was looking at the sturdy shield would look pretty good and then i was gonna do the archetype for champion to get divine alley ally on my shield and just try to build like a really bulky shield and just block a lot i thought mm -hmm. that would be really fun for a for a tank um but getting that reactive shield feat would prevent me from being able to do the shield block, which kind of conflicts a little bit with the build. Yeah. Unless I were to, I think champion has a level 10 feet that lets me get an extra reaction specifically for shield block, but that's a level 10 feet, which we, yeah, I think we need to have some more um, straight up battles where you can reach the enemy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. And then we're, we're going to, we're, if you can close into the enemy, then you're going to have that option of, you know, raise your shield versus an attack at minus five or even yeah, at I minus was, 10. And I, was, it's gonna, I was really looking forward multiple to... Multiple attack penalty makes it feel less costly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was really looking forward to being a Gish and it didn't really get to feel like one yet because they're all in the rafters, but I know it's coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's hard for me to say like, how it feels yet because we didn't really get like a straight like you know combat combat just like yeah punching each other in the face combat yeah um and then we'll see spells spells is my other concern uh I, I, yeah with like not having flexible spell casting we'll see how that goes i don't um, think anyone took damage in this fight we haven't had it was it was no. skill check yeah, around the yeah <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, you blocked the, the damage. I did block one, yeah, that felt pretty in. good. That's what I was hoping, and that did feel pretty good. I, I'm a huge fan of damage reduction, like, mechanics in general, so yeah. that's why I went to the shield. That, that was pretty fun. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. You know what I really like before, before we move forward? Because I, I felt like I was too negative. The whole deity selection thing here in Pathfinder is incredible. I love that picking a deity matters in this game, and there's, like... They give you options, they give you skills, they give you um, the, the favorite weapon thing. Um, there's like boons specifically that you get depending on your deity. That whole thing yeah. is incredible. There's a lot. I don't I'm know if actually, you've seen like, any of the PDFs of the lore, Rex. Have you? No, I don't think so. Oh. I've been using the Nethys uh, website a lot. I'd like to share some of my PDFs with you if, you have, if you'd be interested. But this is All Gods right. and Magic. And it has um, so it has this whole table you can see here of it's a very, bunch of uh, gods, pixelated. and they each have a column: alignments, domains, mm -hmm. cleric spells, favored weapon, divine ability, divine skill, divine font. And that's only two pages. There's six, eight, ten, ten pages of this. <laughs> It's just like, I feel like if you're like a cleric, a paladin, you know, one of these classes, like picking a god should be a big deal, should matter. There should be yeah. like consequences or benefits that should be something. But yeah, Dwarven, it doesn't happen like that. Dwarven gods has its own section here. Yeah. That's yeah, no, I, I love that. That was just really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. D&D, &D, the Trying aspect of your god will only come up if you make your DM remember about it. <laughs> yeah. If you don't, oh, your DM has yeah. to be able to make care it. about it. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I, I want. 
uh, Rex, uh, there's stuff on the lore that I'm, I'm going to send you. I, I'll, I'll, I'll DM you because I think um, <laughs> there's some really enjoyable stuff. In there. Okay, Lane, what do you think? Okay, so, far. so uh, <laughs> something out of game, but something I appreciate to uh, to the ends and beyond. Uh, the player guide for the module. I love the player guide. Uh, just being able to create such an in-depth and explorable character and just go out of your way to create bonds, allies, and enemies just right off the bat that the dungeon master knows about. Yeah. That the that the guide gives an adequate enough information about for you to build off of while not um, spoiling anything and just making it easier mm -hmm. for you to truly understand who your character is uh, is just great for Pathfinder modules. Um, and if they offer players guides with older modules, which I'm presuming that they do, they do all the adventure paths. Yeah, then that is absolutely wonderful for for dungeon masters uh, who really want mm -hmm. to immerse their players uh, into the game and have their characters really feel like they mean something. Like when I was building my character, although I built up the the, the main general backstory off the the premises of the location that we were in and what's what would roughly have been there. I learned so much more about my character through taking a look at uh, the NPCs, where my character would be uh, moving, what their daily routine would be throughout the city, and then learning what NPCs they would have bumped into along the way and how those interactions would have shaped the character moving into the game. So although this isn't anything mechanical per se, I do really like the way Pathfinder 2E has done their player's guides, and I'm really happy with how... Um, the, the backstory and the, the cosmetical features of my character have sort of uh, worked out in the end. Now, uh, although we haven't had much time to explore it mechanical-wise, um, comparing D&D 5e and Pathfinder's action economies, uh, I do believe, uh, in general, um, probably early game, I'm, I have no idea late game, but early game Dungeons & Dragons is more like a five action system for Pathfinder, where mm. in D&D, &D, you get to move 30 feet. It's free. Uh, that would be an action to stride in Pathfinder 2E. You can move five feet, attack, 25 feet. You can you can do so much mm. stuff with that movement in D&D &D that you can't do with That's Pathfinder. And not only that, but although uh, I don't think this is uh, how it should be in D&D &D 5e. A lot of Dungeon Masters play it this way, which is in D&D &D 5e, I can pull something out of my backpack as a free action. In Pathfinder 2e, that isn't a full action. Uh, so, two actions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two <laughs> stuff, right? yeah. Yeah. So putting away my weapon in D&D &D wouldn't cost anything. Pulling a rope out on the same turn wouldn't cost anything. Uh -huh. um, moving wouldn't cost anything. And then I have uh, my action and even a bonus action in D&D to go ahead and throw out as well. In Pathfinder 2E, that would take you roughly two turns to, to do entirely. Um, hmm. So in that instance, although Pathfinder 2E does offer a lot more intricacies with what you can do, um, a lot of people coming into it with the idea that you're getting more bang for your buck every turn is are going to be uh, upset until later down the line because I think... Uh, progression in Pathfinder 2E rewards players with giving them more to do per turn, mm -hmm. uh, giving spellcasters stronger spells, uh, and more spells to play around with, um, fighters more actions that they can do, which are sort of combinations of other things. Uh, something tells me sometime later down the line, a marshal may get access to an, uh, an ability or something that lets them both move and attack at the same exact time. That sounds Pathfinder y to me. I Level feel one. like it might exist. I, I think they can also they can also like attack and do like intimidation checks on the same attack, right? They can do stuff like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, so they get a lot of stuff yeah. that they can go ahead uh to do to to meddle around in the in the system. Um I feel like spellcasters may feel uh lackluster at the beginning, which I am perfectly fine with after after having to deal with spellcaster supremacy in 5e, <laughs> I, I like being weaker than I should right now. That's Are you usually a player or a DM? Uh lately I've been a mixture of both per se. Mm. Uh but I've had uh ample time to to really 
feel yeah. the waters in that regard. Um, every, anytime I see a marshal in D&D 5e, I feel bad for the player who's playing it because I know the spellcaster is better than them in every way. And I'm not going to tell that to them to their face, but but it's true. But yeah, uh, personally, I love the way that everything's balanced right now. I know that if I'm struggling with something right now in the system, it's there's a good enough chance that I just built my character around this niche and not the other niche. So like, oh, I'm having trouble climbing. Well, it's because I didn't pick up any climbing feet, surprisingly. So <laughs> I should try and focus on what I'm good at rather than what I'm not. And that's what I'm primarily focusing on. And if I begin to notice that there's something my character is trying to do a lot that they're not skilled at, I'm going to make it an effort to try and focus into what options I have when I level up moving forward to try and to try and fix that. I, on what you're saying and what Rex is saying, I feel like uh, just on what okay Rex said, you f- feats in D&D or abilities let you do a thing. Mm. And here we're seeing... In the case of Monkey, his ancestry just giving him a plus two bonus to climb instead of letting him have a climb speed, and it's um, it's a one way you could look at it is that they've planned for the long game. They plan for there to be a steady progression in the player's abilities from level one all the way through twenty. That there isn't a plateau that you reach at some point. Yeah. Um, and one thing about the familiar. Um, Familiars, they help you. They can help you with your action economy. They can take things out of your backpack for you, and they can deliver healing potions around the battlefield because you basically gain an action with a minion. They get two actions if you spend one action on them. So there's just one. One could say it's kind of like um, uh, it's just more. There's more levels of progression that are defined. And that has its pluses and minuses. And scaling definitely feels consistent throughout. And that, I think, is largely based on the way that you, you the, the majority of your power increase comes from your level. <clears throat> but that said, yeah, I do appreciate that, you know, some, some, uh, some of the more powerful skill feats, for example, will be, you know, have a level requirement of three or seven or whatever and let you do increasingly more cool, more powerful stuff, help you out with your action economy so that, like you say, you can you can stride and make an attack or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah. And if there's one thing that I think I can already feel um, that I'm going to be very careful of uh, getting into other Pathfinder games in the future, is that I'm going to avoid dungeon masters who are incapable of allowing their players to level up and progress like the plague i feel like if you're stuck at a certain level in pathfinder you're gonna begin to lose your mind like (laughs) nothing's changing i always just have this plus one in this skill i'm never getting better (laughs) it's been 10 sessions like yeah i need consistent progression for this progression based system (laughs) Mm-hmm. And other dungeon mm-hmm. masters, specifically D and D five e dungeon masters, tend to have this thing where they constantly forget to level up their players. They forget yeah. XP. They like playing with milestone, and then they forget to level up their party after a big climactic fight. It's, it's wild in five e territory. I, I, I hate I hate milestone, and I think I'm in the minority there for five e because I did a poll once, and everybody's like, "Oh yeah, everybody plays with milestone." I'm like, "I hate milestone." I'm I'm playing with a, I'm playing in a, I've been playing in a campaign right now, not to throw anybody under the bus, but we've been, we've been the same level for, I think it's been five months. Oh, wow. Like, and we play weekly. That's how it feels sometimes. Thoughts and prayers. And it's just like, uh, like, yeah, I on, agree. like, give me something to, you know? And yeah, I think it's the milestone thing. It's like in their head, they go, well, when we, when they get to this spot, then they're going to level up. And it's like, yeah, but you know how players can be. Like, we're doing this, like, every session, and we never get as far as he thinks. And so it's just like, oh, I'm not going to level them up yet because they haven't got to the you haven't satisfied, like some thing that I said they were going to level mm-hmm. up at. It's like we keep – we spend a whole session, like, getting in bar fights. Like, we're never going to level up because, you know, whatever. Yeah. Anyway. It's a My complex question. Like I think that, it depends too. on a lot of things at once. 
planned a session's worth of content, did four sessions worth of stuff. <laughs> right. right. And one thing, too, to, that you guys will find out is that level one is not one session. It's every session in Pathfinder you're expected to be spend the same amount of time in. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, level one feels really good in Pathfinder. I'll say that too. Um, mm-hmm. You get more hit points, which is great. They should do that in D and D. Like, I, I don't know why level one is just so weak and vulnerable, and you don't yeah. have many abilities. And here, feels like you can do more, straight up. Yeah, you can achieve a lot more, which is good. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for your. That was a great talk, and we will. Um, I, I'm happy. You know, I, I usually run things bi-weekly, but I'm looking forward to seeing each other in seven days. <laughs> yeah, fun. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, maybe, it was, it was maybe blessed. we can ask about straightforward head crunching. The yeah. Arthur's voices behind the northern Yes, door. I need to get into melee. <laughs> yeah. I need to use my Warhammer, man. Right. I'm just like to use some spells, skulls. too. We'll see. Yeah, and your chicken. your His chicken can um, aid him chicken. in combat. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, cool. All fun. right, Thanks, everybody, Charles. make sure to get the. Yeah, you're welcome. Absolutely, no problem. And get the green check mark before you leave. I'm going to stop yes. the recording. Mm-hmm.